Uh, and uh, the list of other institutions that he has headed is very large. I will not go over that. Uh, so also is the list of duties that he has served uh, on. Again, I will not go through those. I will focus on the last part of his very impressive resume, which has to do with the fields that he's working in. Uh, computational, Sanskrit computational linguistic, and Sanskrit pedagogy. Uh, he also e repository for Sanskrit, research methodology of Shastras, philosophy of language, etc. And he has been, and more importantly, for the purpose of this dialogue, he's been engaged in a dialogue between theoretical systems of knowledge and modern thinking. And a uh, large number of publications, he's been awarded the Maharishi Badarayan Vyas Samman and uh, the Swami Chinma Ananda Research Medal and many other awards. Uh, very recently, he was given honorary debate uh, by the government of Maharashtra. So, Professor Barakiri, uh, you're very well known to this audience. Hardly anybody is unaware of your work. So, a very warm welcome. And uh, the the floor is yours, sir. At such a young age. Nice. Ah, yes. I'm so I'm, Professor Kumar adds at a such at such a young age. So you have many many productive years ahead of you, and uh, we're all very grateful for that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Mehta. Um, Respected uh, Chairperson, Professor Shashi Prabha Kumarji, and uh, all other uh, distinguished scholars present here. Um, yesterday, I missed the train. I thought I will miss the gathering, but you have created this opportunity for me to establish a dialogue with the scholars assembled here. But I'm missing the deliberations and the personal meeting with all of you. I'm very sorry, but definitely I will make it a point to meet and learn uh, many things from all of you. Today morning, we started uh, with the opening remarks by Justice uh, Narasimha. And uh, Justice Narasimha, at, at the end of his uh, talk, mentioning about the discussion on uh, Indian Evidence Act, revisiting Indian Evidence Act from Eastern perspective. Uh, in fact, uh, I was part of this uh, dialogue and uh, we, during the Corona, I think post-Corona period, we did it online. I personally, I have uh, interacted with many young, bright scholars of Nyaya and some of them were, uh, ha had studied uh, Dharma Shastra also. And then we started uh, uh, with a good introduction to Indian Evidence Act to, to the young uh, Naya scholars. And after three to four days, they started reacting to it. And uh, of course, within 15 to 20 days, we could really make out that uh, they have really excelled in um, with the remarkable uh, comments on Indian Evidence Act, how uh, we can develop a better version of Indian Evidence Act based on our scriptures. And uh, the, the participants from uh, legal uh, discipline were astonished to see that. And this perhaps could be a, uh, um, still the Indian scholarship, Naya scholarship is alive. Um, the only 
lacuna that we find is uh, there is a big barrier of language. Um, some of us uh, could communicate with you. And uh, of course, uh, our uh, um, Guru Kalpa Acharya Heshi Prabha Kumar started this journey with the modern introduction to uh, the Nyaya philosophy and uh, school of thought and many other scholars. And today we have uh, Professor Jha, Professor Sachidananda Mishra and many others. But there is a galaxy of scholars uh, and very young and talented who are very well trained in Nyaya school of thought and even very rigorous training is given to them. As today morning we were seeing the Buddhist uh, young boys uh, were, uh, you know, deliberating with some actions. And similar uh, sort of uh, uh, debating skills that I see in the traditional schools. But we are, uh, we have to bridge the gap. Either we, we should bring them in the modern stream or we should go there. I think bringing them to this world is very difficult and we should really go, go there and see what is available for us. With this introduction, I uh, today because many scholars are present here, I need not teach anything new to you. I wanted to share a couple of my thoughts on uh, Nyaya because there are so many aspects we can discuss here and uh, scholars continue to discuss for la for next three to four days. Therefore, I have taken only one aspect of it and post lunch discussion hours are very difficult. Mm. I know that too with this serious uh, kind of uh, uh, topic. But uh, people like you are interested, therefore I can propose some uh, some idea to you so that uh, we can deliberate. I don't uh, speak uh, one hour long, uh, one hour long, but I will make it very short so that we can discuss further. I just share my uh, screen. Yes, uh, I think, can you see this uh, screen? If you say yes, I'll be confident. Yes. Thank you. Would you yes. make it? If screen is safe. Would you yes. make Thank you. Can you go to what do you want? Make, shall, make it, shall I make it big? Yes. Okay. Yes. One minute. Let us do the presentation. Slide show icon on the yeah, lower right will be better. Lower right slide show icon. Yeah. Now, now. It's better. Good. It is uh, spread. I think now it is. It is full screen. Yeah. Uh, now it's looking better. Okay. Yeah. yeah these are indicators. Uh, don't worry. Uh, you know. Uh, when we talk about the language and the word and and the cognition, um, you know, the three aspects that we can consider here for discussion. One is the content, I mean, real world, external world. We should understand that that some there is a real world that exists, which is. Um, observable, which is experiential, uh, which is observable. And the second point is that uh, our observation, I mean, my knowledge, my cognition, which I uh, possess in my, either in the, in the soul or in the mind, this is cognition. That is, uh, we can call it as internal world. And there is something which uh, connects these two, that is word. So word and world and there are two worlds. One is external world and internal world, cognition and 
ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲ್ ವಿಷಯ ವಿಷಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಬ್ದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕನ್ನ ಇಟ್ ಕನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಕನೋಟೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ಕೀಪಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಇನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಎನ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ದರ್ಶನ ಹೌ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಣಿತ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಷ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರಾನಮಿಕಲ್ ಸೊ ಸೊ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವೆರಿ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಟೂ ದರ್ಶನ ವೆರಿ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಫರ್ the 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 a kind of world view one is sankhya and another one is vaisheshika the sankhya of course as all of us know um is uh, a different model um which takes a view of everything is made up of prakriti so it is just uh, an expansion of prakriti and nay vaisheshika of course when we see the vaisheshika when we see vaisheshika darshana we can see the basic uh, idea is basic motion is not prakriti it is parmanu so the whole world is made up of uh, the creation of the atoms this is a fundamental uh, starting point of the entire creation is parmanu so we can see the the parmanus are uh, joint and then the whole creation is um, expanded but on the other hand sankhya philosophy says the prakriti is uh, the whole, the universe that we that we see that we experience is coming from prakriti it is just an extraction of prakriti itself so it's a combination of uh, satra rajas tamas according to vaisheshika this uh, the parmanus are discrete and discrete parmanus coming together and creating an object and those objects together create the universe but uh, parmanus are many ananta innumerable so innumerable parmanus coming together created the world and one prakriti which is considered as one and the only one and that created this world which is many as you see the sankhya philosophy says one has become many and uh, vaisheshika says many have become one the altogether approach is different now i come to the point of language when we see the the analysis and development of nyaya philosophy the language is seen as the counterpart of the entire universe there is a correspondence between the uh, physical creation and the language creation we can also see the similar model in the cognition so these three are connected connotation cognition and content these three are totally connected with each other how i derived this we can see 
this is the definition that we send that we can get. it's very simple definition yeah, i mean um, accepted by all the modern nayikas niyatum abhideyatum padartha lakshanam niyatum means it is knowable jnana vishaya every object is jnana vishaya that means uh, if you have an object, then you cannot say that it is it is not known. So it must be known. Therefore, cog there is a cognition and and the object. They have a direct relation. And there is another similar similar definition. Abhidhavishayatto, property of being nameable. If you have an object, it has a name. So name, cognition, and the object, these three have the eternal relation. I mean, they have the relation. For example, if you can see jnanam, padam, and artha, every object in the world is knowable and nameable. Hence, no entity exists without a cognition or without a name. If you have a name, then it must have an object. And if you have an object, it must have a name and cognition. So these three have one-to-one -one direct correspondence and relation. This is what the basic um, uh, no, axiom I, I, I put forth here. So this we should agree. And this is the basic foundational idea of Nyaya Vaisheshika system. So when we understand this, we can also understand this idea. For example, if uh, a sentence is created, sentence is created out of many words. So W1, W2, W3, we have n number of words and which if Wn then it is which, which creates, which is uh, uh, which can be termed as sentence, which is Shabda basically. Shabda is not one, one term. There are so many terms. So, which have their meaning that, that we should, they have sense, they express their sense. Uh, for example, if in Sanskrit we say, Ramaha Vanam Gachati, or uh, any similar sentence, each Rama and even the Visarga part, it is separated because it is Vivakti, it is a sign. And then Vanam, so, Vana is um, a word term that denotes forest and am, am is a sign of symbol of vibhakti, vibhakti symbol that is uh, that uh, dhitiya vibhakti, ram one ko, one ko jata hai, ram one ko jata hai. So here when gachati also has two parts, gama, gama means action, going and ti denotes the the agent. I mean, it's a relation. And uh, when we see this, Ramaha Vanam Gachati, there are six terms. There are no three words. It looks like there are three. According to Panini, this word means when the Vibhaktanta Padam. But when we go to Nyaya Veshish analysis, it has six words. and I mean, six terms. These basic six, six terms, they denote, one denotes the relation, another denotes the content. Together, they make a sense and they make a sentence. So when, here one should note that Rama, this term, has a, a sense in the outside world. For example, mobile. Mobile, this 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 term, this name denotes a particular object like this. Pen, this is pen, and this is a book. So these terms denote a particular object. I mean, object is external word. That means meaning is not a mental condition 
or mental object object meaning is real external object that means external object and the words that we utter have a relation this relation we, we let us not discuss about what is the relation i mean what constitute the relation what constitutes the relation let us not go into that debate but what we should understand is they have got a direct relation and then when i get it when i when i understand when i get it when i hear a term pod or mobile then i get something in my mind a piece of cognition and that cognition has also a direct relation with the rest of the outside world that means uh, these three angles are connected and uh, these three points are connected here one need to understand that nayayikas are realists so realists always claim that if i um cognize something through my senses or if i denote something through my words that real world exists outside in the world that means it is you cannot deny the existence of the reality so assuming that reality exists and i am getting it through my senses and through the words i can express this this three connection are so natural so that i can uh, develop a vast theory based on this so keeping this in our mind see the words out in the, in the world outside the objects are totally scattered and they are discrete and how world is created for example this mobile and is a discrete object but because it is connected to the rest of the world through internet through the net through its uh, um, range of uh, network networking uh, waves then it is part of the world otherwise if it is disconnected if it is not it does not establish any link with the rest of the world it is not included in that world similarly a, a human body when it is with the soul and it is uh, communicating with the rest of the world and it is established it it establishes a relation with the rest of the world uh, through many relations and sometimes what what sort of relations that we can see later then it is part of the universe it constitutes the universe so we can see that objects are discrete when the objects are discrete the terms that are denoting them are also disc should be considered to be discrete they are also discrete so therefore words are discrete because objects are discrete words denoting them are also discrete in nature since the words are discrete the cognitive events that are generated through the words are also discrete in our mind in our mind we will get so many discrete ideas and we connect them so that a universe can be built within our mind so with this realist ideas the whole um, um, world is created for example how basic ideas are described even each object for example um if i consider the mobile mobile maybe it's a uh, 
it's a physical object which has so many um, uh, you know material in it there is a glass there is something called um, plastics or something called wires uh, so this uh, this object is a in a, is an assembly of so many material objects but it has a function it has got a function and without function we cannot say that it is a mobile otherwise it becomes paperweight if if uh, the mobile is not functioning it becomes a paperweight because it is functioning because i can operate through the senses of the mobile mobile screen and uh, it can hear it can produce sound it can connect to the rest of the world it can calculate it can take the picture because so many functions are there, inbuilt functions. So those inbuilt functions and plus this object, this physical object, together make a mobile. So how to understand this? If uh, a Nyayavashishika system would understand this, because this is dharmi, this is property holder, and there are some properties, like functions are properties, those properties make this uh, uh, mo this object as uh, you know operate operating object therefore the together it they together make a mobile today morning just is uh, just is um, narasimha was asking what is the software how can you explain is it a good or it is uh, something else so if i if um, if i am a naive shishika student i would uh, see it as an object. I mean, though it is not a physical object, but it is a function, function of the object. It is dharma. It is property of this mobile. So I cannot sell the mobile without software. Therefore, dharma dharmi bhava is a model is given to me through which I can create, I can understand the entire world. So this is in cognitive level, in, in every cognition, there are two parts. One is I can see, for example, if white uh, object is seen, then I would I would express this is white object, white paper. White is property and paper is property holder, dharmi. And in my cognition, they come together. I can see white and I can see object. Though I am seeing them together, I am perceiving them together, my world express them in, with separate terms. Therefore, I can make them if I can make them separate. Though I cannot make them separate, I cannot tire them. For example, I cannot separate the white uh, color from the paper. They are together in the physical object, physical world. They are also together in my mental condition. But the only term, only my word, they make them separate. Because I have got this kind of relation, direct relation. White has relation with the white color and uh, uh, paper has relation with the paper therefore this is how my language is helping me to understand my cognition analyze my cognition analyze the rest of the world without language i cannot handle the handle the physical uh, physical world neither physical world nor my internal world Therefore, language becomes very important. Language plays very important role in, in creating the world, in analyzing the world. This is what my understanding of Nyaya Vaisheshika system. Now, coming to the relations. Because relations are created. Relations create the world. Because, because the, wor the worlds are discrete. The worlds are discrete. Objects are discrete. And Cognitions are the cognitive events are discrete and how to create the rest of the world and how to analyze them. So there are three kinds of relations that are uh, that are seen in uh, in in the Vaisheshika system. One is ontological relations. They connect the physical world. For example, this is Sanyoga. There are two hands and they are coming together. This contact is Sanyoga. And there is something white paper and white and white paper. They have got a relation. We cannot separate them. Therefore, inseparable condition, inseparable uh, relation is called Samoaya. 
and there is something which is called Swarupa and which, uh, 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 it, which is a kind of uh, another, another relation where we cannot separate them, but we have, we can term them uh, uh, with the two words. Um, that is another kind of self relation. I mean, when there are two, but they, they don't exhibit themselves, they, have, they don't manifest themselves as two, then there is a Swarupa relation. So this is, they reduced, they are reductionist in one sense. Panani is reductionist, but uh, uh, Nyaya Vaisheshika system is also a reductionist system. They try to redu reduce everything into very minimum uh, uh, number of categories. That's the beauty of Nyaya Vaisheshika system. And conceptual relation. We have Dik, Kala, Kriya, samvaya, Samanya, Samvaya, Abhava. Abhava is relation. Negation is relation. For example, you know, uh, there is nothing because I don't, I did not find this object in this, in this room. So Abhava itself is the relation. Dik is relation. Direction. Time is relation. <laughs> Action is relation because though they are objects, they are considered to be, but these objects are not real objects. They are, they are, they are Shastriya Padarthas. Because Shastra can only formulate those Padarthas. So only real Padarthas are three, Dravya, Guna, Karma. Samanya, Vishesh, Samaya, all these, even, even within Dravya, uh, Kala, Dik, Atma, etc. are, uh, are, are, are uh, Shastra Padarthas. So and cognitive relations. Jnanopadhika Sambandha, for example, Jnana, Icha, Dvesha, Prayatna, all these uh, kind of uh, uh, internal properties will also be, uh, will also act as relation with the rest of the world. Therefore, we can see these uh, three kinds of relations with, out of which we can create the entire world. So in external world, why I'm telling this? Since Nyaya Vaisheshikas are release, we cannot say that language is, language is a separate entity from the world and world is separated from the language or world is created from the language. No, we don't believe it. So there are so many theories. Sorry. There are so many theories, um, they contradict with the Nyaya Vaisheshika system, therefore we need to establish. So I don't go into the details of this. I have explained this, how Paramanus uh, become an object in the world. Paramanus, they become, uh, they, 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 transformed, they are transformed into Dvanuka, Trinuka, Chaturunuka and the entire body is created. So here, um, basically, I wanted to, uh, I, I don't go into the details, whatever I wanted to present, I just presented. Coming to the language, the how the world and the next world together, they, with the relation of Akanksha, they make the sense. Therefore, language is generating a kind of cognitive event in the mind, which is complex. But the terms are discrete, objects are discrete, cognitive events are discrete, they are, they, coming, they are coming together and they are giving us a meaningful universe. Now, without going to the details, I just close here with uh, one comment that um, Language of Nyaya Vaisheshika. I mean, why I'm calling Nyaya Vaisheshika? Basically, Nyayikas worked with the language. Vaisheshikas worked with the, they dealt with the, with the physical uh, creation. But they came together and they, they, had, they have given a model. Those model, 
they complement with each other. They, com they are complement to each other. Therefore, we call them Nyaya Vaisheshika system. Um, here, one point to be noted, the language that we use, that we utter, that we employ in our conversation, that has ambiguity. Therefore, as we all of as all of us know, we need a language as uh, scientists because we are dealing with with exact word like mathematics. Now, mathematics is a language which uh, allows which allows one to deal with the exactness. If I want to create exact uh, definitions uh, without any ambiguity. Then I need a language which does not have any ambiguity. And in the West, as we see, the artificial languages are created because uh, they thought that the mathematics numbers, each number, the numbers don't have any other meaning. I mean, numbers are numbers and they're discrete. They mean uh, simply uh, they have only one sense. So we can create the exactness through the through the mathematical language. So similar, sim keeping the mathematical model in mind, they have created artificial languages, which are close to the human beings, and they are hybrid artificial languages, of course. But in the in the in the East. Uh, People followed Panini's model. Panini, instead of creating an artificial language, 3000 years back, he has developed a language which is uh, employed in restricted sense, which is called Paribhasha. So Paribhasha means Parichinna Bhasha. Parichinna means language with restrictions. If I use this term in this particular sense, in this domain, I use this word in this particular sense. This statement itself creates a paribhasha. That's been parichinna bhasha, restricted language. Using restricted language, I, I can avoid so many ambiguities. Keeping this in mind, similar model, Navinaya language has been developed by Nayaikas. Um, you know, there's a language with a lot of, uh, uh, it is uh, called Navinaya language. It is not an artificial language, but it is language, restricted language created out of regular language. It is regular expression. So in this way, when we, basically I have tried to understand the Navinaya language in simple terms, only as mathematics, and in mathematics we have numbers, 1 to 9, 0 to 9, and then we have operators, 1 to 9, 0, 0 to 9, and then we have operators, and then we have uh, some functions. With these, we can create n number of mathematical formulas, n number of uh, well-formed formula. Similarly, basic five elements of relations and uh, they are dharma dharmi bhava uh, property and property holder relation and nirupa nirupaka bhava a kind of genetic uh, uh, you know shakti sambandha for example king of ayodhya this off relation so off relation nirupa nirupaka bhava and uh, pratiyogi anyogi bhava and avachedya avachedika bhava is only five basic uh, relations are considered and with these five terms i can create a a, a kind of uh, expression and that can express anything in without any ambiguity so this is a beautiful uh, uh, you know way is found by nayaikas which am, which is employed by la last 4 and 4 to 500 years by all the um, not only by logicians, but by all Indian thinkers, including Jyotisha, Ayurveda, Vedanta. And uh, without, the, without that language, nobody has uh, created, nobody has written anything. Uh, 
Um, therefore, we need to really look into those details. Just I quote, um, uh, just now I was reading, um, you know, how uh, recently uh, uh, Indian logic reader, um, so I just quote, you know, everyone knows um, George Boone. Um, his wife uh, has written an article where she has mentioned how Indian uh, thinkers have influenced the Western thinking in logical system. Um, how uh, the discovery of uh, Cole Brook, the Hindu Silaism presented the consciousness of these European uh, uh, thoughts. So, actually, we need not, you know, claim that everything is uh, coming from the East. But people have accepted this uh, for last uh, several uh, centuries. Um, the effort, the efforts made by uh, Indian thinkers have influenced many of the Western thinkers to understand the basic nature of the language and the world so that they have created new world out of this. So with these uh, words, I just uh, uh, stop here and I would like to hear from you and I request you to comment upon and also I request you to uh, take discussion further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Barakiri. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. Professor Kumar, you have one. Thank you, Professor Varkadi, for enumerating and expounding the nature and status of language in Nyaya Vaishishika thinking model. I hope you would agree that the term Padartha that they employ for describing Tattva. Philosophy is Tattva Jnana or Tattva Darshana. Mostly this term was being used before, but Nyaya in a later period, but Vaisheshika since beginning, they use the term Padartha, which itself focuses upon the significance of language, Padasya Artha, Padartha. So Pada and Artha, when they are combined, they become a padartha. All the six or seven categories that have been enumerated, they are padartha. Later on, abhava was added to it. So the three criteria that you mentioned, that is content, cognition, and connotation. These three are also accepted as common criteria among all the six categories. Shannamapi padartha so you have very lucidly, with the help of your PowerPoint presentation, you have enumerated and expounded this connection between the three, the reality or the world, which is a content. How do we cognize the world and how do we explain it or express it through language and how these three are related? In the world of Nyaya Vaisheshika, realistic world view of Nyaya Vaisheshika, relations are also very important because every category is an independent entity. They are not inherently related. They are all independent category, but they are related through Sanyoga or through Samavaya. And later on, the third type of relation, the Swarupa Sambandha was added. And as you said, that Navya Nyaya 
in all even later periods the navya nyaya developed a language which was so exact that the opponents could not find fault with the theories of each other they devised this language model which went to the extreme of expression extremely exact expression which could expound the theory and which was which could also protect it from the object you know, opponents objections i think this model of nyaya vaisheshika is not only a metaphysical model it is also a model of cognition and the shabda bodha or the shabda praman the vaisheshikas the early vaisheshikas they do not accept any shabda praman even shabda as a guna is not counted by kanada in his sutra it came in the later period and in the texts of later scholars but when both of them the nyaya and vaisheshika combined then shabda became a very very important aspect and shabda pramana and under shabda pramana is shabda bodha shabdi prama pada jnanam tu karanam dwaram tatra padartha dhi so how we express the whole theory of akanksha yogyata sannidhi tatparya all these are discussed in fact the text bhasha parichhed the very name of the text bhasha bhasha here doesn't mean language actually bhasha and denotes the tatva or padartha like tarka sangraha the term tarka tarkyante pratipadyante tarka padartha similarly in bhasha parichhed these padarthas are parichhinna they are separated from each other so this school the combined school of nyaya vaisheshika has contributed a lot to the world and the, as a theme of the workshop is nyaya and the world i think this theme is very very closely connected with the language aspect of nyaya which you have very lucidly explained so i just had these comments for you no questions but there may be some questions from the floor thank you so much so i have i have a request before the comments come in i'm not a nyaya person a lot of these categories some of these i've seen before and they seem quite logical right but the rest was for me a maze of technical terms so obviously there are many nyaya scholars here is it possible that you could take an example a simple example anything that you like i'm sure you've done this many times in your class and a high level approach to the basics you know why let us say if we are talking about climate change this is a very contentious topic right now right how can these categories help us have a dialogue say between the climate denial the climate change deniers mm. and the climate change propounders right so how if i'm going to convince um if I, i'm not going to convince anybody but if i'm going to at least have a dialogue so that if i'm a denier the people who are the scientists on the other side side who are proponents of climate change can they at least understand what are my objections and can i understand what they are trying to say and this can help you with that line is it possible or is it too much to ask that's my question i'm sure others would have some but i thought i would ask this question as a naive individual but who's interested in the subject any any other scholar uh, in this floor in this floor uh, would like to comment on this should i try yeah <laughs> yes that would be great yeah uh, so uh, your question can be seen from two perspectives one is how to engage with those persons who are denying climate change in a dialogue because and that will be how to argue with that yes exactly this is the point yeah. so uh, and second point could be that uh, uh, we are say we say that this uh, there is no climate change climate change is actually a propaganda type yeah. thing so there could be two persons two positions could be there 
that climate change is happening, other pollution will be that climate change is not happening. So first we have to define what do we mean by the term climate change. We have to define. Uh, for example, uh, as earlier, and nowadays, uh, these data are available. Yeah. So earlier, when the first type of uh, glaciers were not in that way uh, as we are seeing now, we are, we are seeing now. Earlier, there, those were there was so much full of ice, and now this is happening. So, the, taking these issues, we can argue, but with a, with some, there should be some points where there is an agreement because uh, this is the narrow position. But whenever you are arguing with someone, we have to make a point of debate where we are arguing, where we are agreeing. So there could be some points on which we disagree, and there could be some points where we are agree. So is there a technique? Is there a way in which the categories can be defined? Yeah. So that the points of disagreement can yeah, be yeah. articulated? Yeah. So how do we do that? So in the beginning of any debate, uh, yeah. Yeah. It is not. so at the beginning of a debate, any debate, there is a need of the pratipatti vakya. So first sentence, sentence should be pratipatti vakya. And that the pratipatti vakya should be uttered. And thereafter, one position be uh, supported by another person, and the position would be defeated by, rejected by another person. Take for example, uh, because taking a different example could make the point that be fair. Suppose an AI has to argue with a Buddhist scholar on the issue whether Atman exists or not. So now see, the question Atman exists or not is meaningless. This is not a difficulty, but they are not. Why? Because whenever you are accepting something, then only you can negate it. If Atman is like unicorns, how a unicorn, that cannot be negated. So there could be some points of agreement. For example, for Buddhist, the position will be that Atman is nothing but a, uh, but a name. And this this doesn't denote refer to any reality at all. Because Atman is only a name. Without any reality, without any external object corresponding to this one. So here on this issue, there could not be uh, any debate. So debate turns to different angle. Debate turns to different angle. That is and here again, if you are uh, arguing with a, uh, the Atma Vadi with a Chahwa, their point will be whether the body is the Atman or different Atman. Yes. And then if you are arguing with the Buddhist, whether the aggregate is sufficient, the aggregate is sufficient for all the empirical uses or not. And here, the aggregate is there. And the aggregate is acceptable to the Nayakas. As well as to Buddhist. So, on this issue, there could be a deal. And this will be the starting point. I see. So, you're saying basically that you're saying basically that um, you have to very carefully define the terms, the points of agreement and disagreement. But, but surely there must be a technique to do that. I don't know. Professor Varakhedi, would you like to, or anybody from the audience, if you would like to? Yeah, yeah. I I would like to just uh, offer it, uh, one point um, that as uh, Professor Sachidanandji explained, uh, the methodology of uh, placing the arguments, uh, argumentation method, very uh, clearly he has mentioned. Uh, I wanted to say something. Many a times what happens because their opponents will have their own uh, different sets of categories different sets of uh, uh, terms to 
you know, deliberate within their school, within their, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Sachidanji mentioned, uh, the Buddhist school uh, has different connotation for Atman. And uh, Vaisheshika school has different connotation for Atman. You know, we differ with each other. Whether Atman exists or not, this question itself is uh, very, uh, it's, it is an illogical question. Because according to Vaisheshika system, Atman exists because they define Atman like that. According to Buddhist, Atman does not exist because Atman, the term Atman itself has different connotation. Therefore, many a times this is happening. Therefore, what we should do is we should come to a common conclusion that I am I will use the terms in this particular sense, which is not taking any side. Okay. Uh, Professor Pahi used to uh, uh, use a term, content neutral concepts. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take any side. Uh, so that sort of content neutral concepts are developed by Nyaya Vaisheshikas. Both of them, I mean, Buddhist or the opponents of Buddhist can employ that language, that particular concept, uh, conceptual framework. It doesn't affect both of them. So both of them can happily use without losing their own uh, connotations. So that is the beauty of uh, Nyaya Vaisheshika language that we have to develop. A, a single uh, uh, commonly agreed conceptual framework plus a language that can be employed to uh, debate without any confusion. That's it. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe still on the same topic, and I had a similar thought that Professor Kumar articulated for a distinction where, for the most part in your talk, you describe a very clarifying, not just for the measure of the theory of language in the Nyars and Ovalaj, and you get a beautiful answer having to do with the correspondence theory and all of that. So that's sort of the epistemological or ontological theory of language that can be extracted. But what we have just now been debating is more something has, in some sense, very little to do with that theory of language, but has more to do with the philosophical practice of debate and discourse, in a sense, precisely what the previous talk had talked about, you know, the, the culture of debate, strategies for yeah. uh, a method for strategies of arriving at conclusions and so on and so forth. So that seems to me to require a very different approach to language that has to do more with a culture of debate, with a framework for discussion, um, and so on and so forth. So is are you saying that the Nyara Sutras have a kind of meta theory of that second? understanding of language also, or is that more a practice one extracts from how the debates between the, with the, the Buddhists and so on and so forth proceed? Does that, does that question make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Due to uh, the uh, the, the the internet connection. I missed some of the uh, lines. I didn't. I didn't get it. Some of the lines are not heard by me. Okay. Can you please repeat? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just I. I was returning to the distinction of the sutras theory of language as related to the world and cognition and so on and so forth and the the philosophical or debate practice of language. And I think the discussion, um, especially your two questions related to that second, to that second understanding of language. Yeah, go ahead. If I may in yeah, yeah. respond to what Professor yeah. Shailendra Mehta asked, the question that you raised about climate change, 
I think that was not the pro that will not be the proper example for an argument because it's so much visible and it's proved without doubt nowadays that climate change is happening. And for any dialogue or debate, any deliberation to begin with, as Professor Vishra mentioned, the Nyaya Sutra clearly states, the Nyaya Bhashya more explicitly, that there should be doubt, which you said with Pratipatti Bhakti. It means that there should be some dubitable point on which there are two positions possible. One is for and the other is against. And the Bhashyakara says, Nyaya sanshaite arthe pravartate. Nyaya begins with a doubt. Na anupalabdhe arthe. If the topic of discussion is not available, then it is futile to discuss about that. Na nirnite arthe. And if it is decided already, like climate change, it is a nirnita arthe. We don't have to debate. Now we are facing the consequences. So it is a very, very nirnita arthe. Therefore, no doubt, no debate about it. But if we have something more dubitable about, like he presented the classical idea, um, example of Atman. He can have many more examples. We also have that classical example of Parvato, Vandiman. There is a methodology. The question was regarding the methodology of the page. Or is there a model, a structure? First of all, Pada and Artha. Pada is the name. And Artha is the word referent. Pada is word, Artha is meaning. So word and meaning are both important and both are real. In Nyaya Vaisheshika view, in Buddhist view, only the name is real. The Artha or the object, this glass is nothing but a name given to this object. But according to Nyaya Vaisheshika, this is an Artha. We have given it a name, a pada, that this is a glass. Right? So pada and artha both are real, both are connected, and for knowing the real nature of any object, we should know the essence of pada. How many padarthas? According to Nyaya, there are 16. According to Vaisheshika, there are six or seven. Now, whenever there is a doubt, we have to argue. We can have arguments of two types. One is the argument via anvay, via correspondence. And one is via vyatirek, via negation. So we can have a negative example and we can have a positive example. Yatra yatra dhumaha tatra tatra vandihi. Wherever there is smoke, there is fire. This is the anvaya example. Yatra yatra vandhi abhavaha. Tatra tatra bhumahava. Wherever there is no fire, there is no smoke. This is the Gatirek. And there are five steps to a logical argument. If we have to argue, there have to be five steps according to Hindu Nyaya, three steps according to Buddhist Nyaya, and even in Western logic, we have the three step syllogism. Panchavaya Vakya. The name of this Panjavaya Bhakya itself is Nyaya. Nyaya has many meanings. One of them is Panjavaya Bhakya. You see, if I have to convince myself for an object, I don't need language. We are discussing language and Nyaya. If I want to understand something, I don't have to speak. I will just introspect, reflect, and try to understand. But if I have to make others understand I have to speak. I have to take recourse to language. And there has to be a method, a structure. And this is a panchavaya bhakya. First is pratijya. We should state what is to be proved. Pratijya. Sadhya nirdesha pratijya. Let us come together, the Purva Paksha and the Siddhanta Paksha. What do we need to prove? So pratijya is Enumerating what is to be proved. Just as we say hypothesis. This is to be, in maths also we have to prove this. So this is pratijya, the statement of the thing to be proved. Next logical thing according to Nyaya is, as soon as you say that I need to prove this, how can you say that? Give us an argument, give us a reason. So next is reason. 
So sadhya sadhanam hetu. That means which can prove or which can help us in proving sadhya is the hetu. Reason, argument or evidence. Then third is udaharana. Example or illustration. Drishtanta we call it. Like parvat par agni hai. There is fire on the hilltop. How can you say that? Because we are standing here at the ground. Hilltop is so high. It is raining. We can't climb up the hill. How can you say that there is fire? So I can say dhuma parvato vanniman dhuma vatva. Because smoke is emanating from there. So dhuma is the hetu. Vanni is the sadhya. What is the relation between fire and smoke? The relation is illustrated through the third step, drishtanta, that is illustration, yatra yatra dhuma tatra tatra vanni yatha mahanase. Mahanas is the kitchen, rasavati. These days there is no smoke in the kitchen, but the example belongs to the age when there was smoke in the kitchen. Right? Jaha jaha dhuma hai, vaha vaha agni bhuti hai, jaise rasvai hai, anvai drishtam. Now if we go to Vyatireka, jaha jaha agni nahi hoti hai, vaha vaha dhuma bhi nahi hota hai, jaise. Wherever there is no fire, there is no smoke like a pond. There is no fire and no smoke. Three steps, pratijya, hetu, udahar. Fourth it is upanaya, that is application. We have seen smoke on the hilltop. We are trying to prove that there is fire. We have also explained the relation between the smoke and the fire through the example of a kitchen and through a counter example of a pond. Right? Now the fourth is application. Upanaya, Takha Chayam. This hill where the smoke is visible the smoke is related to fire just like the smoke and fire in the kitchen. So we are relating the theory that we have understood with the example which is in front of us. Upanai, Tatha Chayam. And last but not the least in the fifth one, the first was hypothesis. In the fifth is words are same. Parvato Vanniman. Here also we will say Parvato Vanniman, but the intent is different. In the first statement, we were just hypothesizing, we were just proposing that there is fire on the hilltop. Now we have concluded, we have reached at the conclusion that Parvat Parvani hai, Parvato Tasmat Tatha Parvato Vanniman. So these are the five steps of a syllogism. Anything that we want to prove according to Nyaya has to be put in this model. Like, for example, tomorrow I'll talk about Ishwara Numana. So when we try to prove the existence of God, all the arguments that have been given, they will be put into these at least three sentences in three different lines. First line will be Pratijya. Second line will be in Panjami Vibhakti, that will be in Hetu. And third line will be in Trishtanta or in Daharana. So, a nyaya, a panchavayava nyaya has to be written like that. There is a, just like in mathematics, we have a style of writing this nyaya. So that's a brief technical exposition of the syllogism. Can you also explain why we are sufficient for help to why we need fire in nyaya? Yeah, because I think because of the, even in Buddhism, I yeah. they also have a yeah. three because they are the major term, the middle term, yeah. and the third is Pratham and Pratijya, Hetu and Nigaman. But here we focus on the examples. The theme that you have chosen, Nyaya and the world, there the notion of philosophy is different for Aristotle. And for an Indian scholar, for an Ayayika, more so, the examples that he is giving, they are more important for the public at large to understand. It's not only for the two persons who are walking and they are looking at the hilltop, but they have to explain it. This is Paratharamana. I mentioned about Swatharamana where no language is required. But in Paratharamana, unless I explain it in full terms, in all the ingredients, I tell the students, Paratharamana, 
What is pratijja? Sadhika Nirdesh pratijja hai. What is Hetu? The reason given to prove is Hetu. But where is the example? So the example is the third one and open eye. These two are not present in the Aristotelian logic. While in Indian logic, but Hindu logic, you should say Udaharana and open eye. They are very important. Udaharana relates it with the day to day life. It simplifies and explains it, and open eye applies it to the example. Okay. So you need them. So the two additional things are Udaharana. example and application. Okay. I would like to add something. Yeah. May I add something? May I, may I add something? Yeah, please. Uh, and, and there are two uh, 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 discussions have come up. Uh, one, uh, as lastly, uh, Professor Mehta asked, why this uh, Upanaya and uh, Nigamana has to be included. Um, I think you have uh, uh, Udaharana, uh, for example, you have explained that Udaharana should be uh, given uh, unless and until Udaharana is given, it is not clear. There is another way uh, because there is a long debate in Indian history uh, whether to accept three or five or four mm. or sometimes one. So number discussion on number of syllogisms is also a uh, long, a long time held. Uh, this discussion is held for a long time. There is one uh, argument. There is another argument that uh, the Vyapti and Pakshi Dharmata, I mean, so the, the reason uh, given and uh, the object to be justified, proved, both, uh, both should have a relation that is called Vyapti relation. Sadhya Hetu. These two must have, these two terms must have a relation that is Vyapti relation. And there is another relation, Hetu, the reason that is given must exist in the Paksha. That means, for example, Parvataha Vannimaan. Vanni is Sadhya. Dhuma is Hetu, Hetu. Hetu must exist in the, I mean, reason um, uh, must exist in the Parvata. This is called Paksha Ramata. Explain this. There are two terms, two two uh, sentences. That is uh, udaharana and upanaya. There, uh, because uh, this vyapti should not be null and void. Example will establish that this is at least there. Some, there must be one example. Because one place where you find uh, this relation. That means, even by giving one example, you cannot prove that this has these two have. You know, very strong, inevitable relations. You cannot say that. But one example would say, would justify that this is not null and void. That's it. So, so this is how uh, the debate goes on. Anyway, I wanted to just add one more thing, which, which I consider recently, just two, three days back, I was uh, watching TV, television, where uh, now nowadays debates are going on UCC. You know, UCC debates are going on. And there, what I found is the two, three persons are sitting and they are argue, arguing. And of course, they are, I thought they are, they are sitting there to confuse the public. They are not interested in any conclusion. They don't want any conclusion. Therefore, they are sitting there to confuse the public. So when the in, intentions are to generate the confusion instead of the conclusion, the arguments will go on different ways. Uh, you know what happens? Um, we have in our um, uh, Nyaya system, we, we have developed a methodology. Because there should not be any defects in the language. There should not be any defects in the in the argumentation, reason, and chala jati nigrahasthana. I mean, people come with uh, you know. Um, so when the debate, UCC means some for some some people it is discrimination. For some people it is. It is um, uh, removal of discrimination. UCC means, I mean, UCC does not have any technical meaning for them. So therefore, as Professor Sachidanti said, we should come to the conclusion, what is UCC first? So unless and until we decide what is, what is the definition of UCC, otherwise people start their ab abusing other parties, saying that UCC means discrimination. And some people would say it is removal of discrimination. And therefore, so therefore, def there, there must be some clear definitions. After that, some while arguing, people start with the intention of the opponent. 
your intention as this who said that you know while, while arguing you should state what is the problem or what is the reason what is the problem in the opponent uh, very objective uh, opponents uh, objective kind of uh, uh, defects in the opponents uh, so these are the, i think the the nyaya methodology will resolve these issues otherwise uh, even it is said that in, in our uh, scriptures it is said that such people are must be debarred from the debate they must be sent out of the debate so if these rules are followed i think uh, uh, public debates will have more impact on the public and um, uh, i think trp will go down but definitely there must be some conclusion thank you very much i think uh, the uniform civil code example that you gave is a great one i think uh, yes professor actually i wanted to add to your question you asked uh, the distinction why there is need of only three syllables three points three sentences in uh, aristotelian syllabus and why the ai can be trapped yeah. I would like to add here that in Aristotelian syllogism, there is no distinction between Swartham man and Parakha. Which means? An inference for the self of for the self, an inference for the sake of others. I see. So when we are inferring ourselves or ourselves, we don't use any sentence. There is no need of any sentence. And very beautifully, uh, Acharya Shankar. Uh, explained Pashwa Vivis Chavishaita. Here, as we infer in the same way, animals also in. I see, but they can't express. They can't express. So, the, the distinction between us, this one, that when we infer, we can communicate to others to eat, but the animals are unable to do it. So, the point, this point is very well. Argued and uh, explained by Jan Manjari. He says that why do we need five sentences? And he says that actually the problem is that par naam do mm-hmm. how others understand it. it is very difficult. And you know, I think uh, everybody knows that in Silo- Aristotelian syllogism, there is no ordering that. Uh, uh, you can say in both ways. Yeah. Either you can say all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, and then uh, vice versa. Socrates is a man, and all men are mortal. And conclusion will be same. Is it okay? No. So this is the point. But the Jan Bhatt said that actually we have to be very careful when we are trying to make others infer. And in that way, as we understand, in the same way we communicate others to others. So first, what we are trying to prove, that is the one. Therefore, there is particular. And there must be some reason. So there is a reason, therefore, it will not. And there must be some examples. And as Professor Varkhevi was saying, that few things are necessary. Pyakti Gyan and Pakshara. And you can see that. What can you define those please? Yeah, yeah. universal concomitants okay. and the presence of Kirtu in Paksha. And if I take the famous example, Parvato Vajman Dhuma. So here, Parvat is Paksha. Because in Parvat, you are going to prove the existence of fire. So Parvat is Paksha, uh, fire is Sarge, and the smoke is Kirtu. So, Pakshadharmata is presence of smoke in the mountain is Pakshadharmata. So, we must be aware of this point that the smoke is present in the mountain. So, this is called the Pakshadharmata. In second one is that wherever there is smoke, there is fire. So, the knowledge of this universal concomitants is required. So, these two are very much required. And you can see that Sadhya is Pratigya is there, Ketu Vakti is there, Mudahara Vakti is there. These two conditions are fulfilled. So if these two conditions are fulfilled, why there is a need of Uparaya Vakti and why there is a need of Mirana? He says, Jain the actual problem is this one. Who removed two Ketu Vakti? And actually, if there is any Ketu Vakti, we cannot kill. 
and to remove others. Sorry, his professor gave his work. Fallacy. Fallacy. Yes. If there is a fallacy, the, the inference is invalid. Yeah. So to remove to Hekta Bhasa, that is Chakpati Paksha and Vadika, we need uh, Upanayanarki and also Nigamaka. We define the two terms. Chakpati Paksha and we have Nigamaka. What does that mean? But if suppose someone is um, willing to infer that mountain is high because of snow, and some other person is willing to show that mountain is not high because it is made of uh, uh, rocks. Yeah. Yeah. rocks. So here to examine the two opposite examples can be given. And two opposite examples when are given in the help way. We uh, we follow that in that particular, and when these two examples are given, then after when Upanayat is spoken, that Varnibya pe Romavatwa, uh, sorry, Yantam Chalam, Varnibya pe Romavas Chen, and Varnabhava Bya pe Pashanam Tuan, and when we are telling it, this comes in front that there is Sattva. So to avoid Sattva Sattva. And uh, we need five sentences. And even there is a very um, one um, more beautiful example that this is not limited here. Then sometimes there is a need of a Kantako Dharma because sometimes it happens, it may be the situation. Kantako Dharma means what? Kantako Dharma means that Kantako Dharma. Kantako Dharma. Removing Removing the thought because when there is there are thoughts you cannot work. So, so then, in order to go, you have to remove the thoughts. So Kantakun Dharbat is required. This is to say when you are in the terms, you, you are that. inferring, yeah. you are going in a very um, clear way. You are passing the path very clearly. So if suppose in uh, when you have uttered these five sentences. In spite of that, thus there is a doubt that whether there is Virudna, there is a Pantpaksha. In that case, one has to address more sentences to remove all doubt. Understood. So it is not ended here. Wonderful. So how so I think we won't obviously get to these questions, but I want to park this and Puja can make a note. These are some very important techniques that are important for clarifying things to yourself. But more importantly, as you pointed out, as Professor Varkini also pointed out, that if the point of view is communication, yeah. right? You know, as Bernard Shaw said, the, 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 the biggest fallacy about communication is, is assuming that it has taken place. So, uh, so the point is that we may say something, but you may hear something totally different. So I think how we use these techniques to make uh, our communication precise and palatable. Yeah. I think these are extremely important. So I thank you. I think this is extremely yeah, done. I just want to follow up on this a little bit. Uh, is it fair to say in the language now used in um, uh, mostly game theory these days? Uh, is it fair to say that these issues that you just alluded to? But so nicely explained. Can we describe our type in this language as problems of assuming common knowledge? Uh, common knowledge being the idea that you know something, I know something, and then the question of what do I know about what you do you know about what I know about you? We lose the knowledge. It's over. <laughs> uh, so, uh, most of the discussions in decision theory, and which are only a few decades ago, as what I a struggle with knowledge that I achieved. And it seemed to me that we might be able study these subjects that these issues of five part or six or four part 
civil business arise. And there is a challenge of the management that we cannot assume that. Uh, you may know some, you may know it, I know, I know it, I don't know it. <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> so that Jan is telling that we cannot presume that the person in the day interestingly one Navini Aika, Maya Navishra, very clearly says that they need of only one sentence. That is a reason. No, no. Ubanaiva. Ubanaiva kill for ya, sufficient. Application. So yeah, Ubanaiva, because what is in the internet? ಪಕ್ಷಿಂಗ್ When you are uttering in that one sentence, one is not knowing it, one is not grasping it. Actually, when you say, wherever there is smoke, there is fire. So, you acquire the knowledge of Vyakti through this process. Because you have seen so many places that in the uh, kitchen, in other places, there is smoke and there is... And when you are presenting this fact to the person, the person also acquires and becomes aware of that. So therefore, in this way it is. And therefore, it is saying that, uh, and here, uh, the Nayaika way of saying this, wherever there is smoke, there is a fire. And in historical logic, we say, I'm an abode. Because you can formulate it. Whoever is a man, that is bold. But when you are talking in that way, whoever is a man is mortal. Vyakti is coming. All men are mortal. It is coming, but it is not coming in that assertive way. But when you are enumerating one by one, like when you are saying each and any, yeah. that conveys something different. When you are saying all, it conveys something different. So the Nayarika way of telling it, each and each in every in that. Lisa, you have a question. I, I have a comment. Yeah. And but I like you, you don't also um I think we're back to Arcadia still here, but it's a comment first. Um everything that um Professor Such and is saying about um the wisdom in love is I see it's correct and very insightful. I would just add one point that's actually pretty critical about that comparison and it's and having done some comparative logic i think that one of the first things that we see is the insufficient insufficiency of um Western logic is that the inductive systems and the deductive systems are kept separate yeah. so all of the generalizations that are made in experience and examples are in separate books from the deductive logic And so you can have to talk about you know unicorns that's perfectly valid or just exclusive that you can't have. And so we see the advantage, I think, um, in our system is that the inductive and the deductive are held together in a way that in a way that tracks true. Fine for that point, I would like fine for also grows within itself induction. And when, when we do a comparison, we see that you know that it's not quite it's, it's both. It, It includes the, the thinking of both deductive logic and inductive logic, but which Aristotle keeps separate mm -hmm. in his books. And so you can do deductive logic with two deductive logic about logics, where you can't do that. Yeah. You know, the fallacies are, you know, moved around. And they're separate fallacies. Okay. So that, that's just one comment. And, um, and that's why actually these seasons, you know, there's so much hope for um, being able to use our kind logic in new ways. I think so. Um, but just because we were off track just a little bit, I did have one question. I think he just signed out. He has he find out. So, yes. so the so the president of India has convened a conference tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, the he, awesome. and there's a preliminary meeting at four o'clock that okay. he had to ask. I'll save my question for later. So we we so, so, one point I would like to answer in here. 
uh, when I started reading the Shabda Yoga, I was uh, sometimes very perturbed. Seeing some examples, some examples like that, uh, all cows are monkeys, and uh, bee is a cow, so bee is a monkey. So you can see that this type of inference is very much valid in the This kind of inference is very much valid because it's a normal logic and it has nothing to do with the reality. But this kind of logic is not valid in the name. Yes. And take one another example. If I say all men on Mars are mortal, Ram is a man on Mars, Ram is mortal. So here, something very peculiar is done because there are no men in the mass. Hmm. But here in the AI system, you cannot infer that type. That type of things is not possible because we have made a peculiar head of us, Ashrayasi. So if Ashrayasi is there, you cannot do. So this falls in that category, Ashrayasi. And therefore, there was. Uh, Boolean logic and the uh, one introduction one they are required. Yeah, and Bool, as uh, Professor Varakiri was talking about, uh, his wife at least mentioned that he got some ideas from India. I don't know that. I have not gone to that. I think uh, there is some talk of that. Anyway, I think uh, the, any other questions, anything else that uh, we need to take cognizance of? Our uh, next distinguished speaker is Professor Sachidananda Mishra, who is the member secretary currently of the Indian Council of Philosophical Research. Uh, he's a very well known academician, academician who focuses on Nyaya, Navya Nyaya, and Advaita Vedanta, and in particular, in Charvak, Kashmiri Shaivism, uh, Shuddha Advaita Vedanta and uh, many others. Uh, he uh, had, is also concurrently a professor at Banaras Hindu University. Prior to that, he's had many other academic appointments, including you know, a visiting appointment at Sorbonne Nouvelle in Paris. Uh, he has been honored by the President of India with the degree of Arvati Upadhi of the Maharishi Badarayan Vyas Samman. Uh, one of the highest in the field. And he has published and edited many, many books, 11 at the last total. And uh, for our point, from our point of view, edited the research journal Anvikshiki, or Nyaya, uh, for five years. So over to you, Professor Mishra, you will be talking about Nyaya and Vedanta. Akshapar Samaram Dham, Gangesha Chaji Madhyamam, Asimata Chaji Madhyam Dham, Pandiri Vrita. Respected Professor Shahid Prabhav Marjan, Mike, Mike, Professor Shahid Prabhav Vrita, Mr. Vishnu Rauzi, and uh, many scholars from different parts of country and different parts of Professor Shashikrabha Kumarji has invited me to speak uh, on Advaita Vedanta Shabharatiya Shastra Paramparaka Chudanta Nidarshan in Delhi University, coming 22nd July. And when I got this invitation to speak on Nyaya and Vedanta, I thought, what should I speak here? Because the title of the workshop is Nyaya and the World. And the world is full of plurality. So I have chosen the topic, a case for duality, refutation of non-dualism by gender. So in this paper, 
what are you going to do? As the topic was given, Nyaya and Vedanta. So you can see very clearly that this topic includes Nyaya and Vedanta both, but takes one side. That is the side of Nyaya. So here, I will be doing the opposite. What are you going to do in Delhi University? <laughs> opposite are bad. This is to say, I will be refuting the Advaita Vedantic position from the higher perspective. And why is it so? There are very much similarities between Nyaya and Vedanta. How both are related? This is one question. And how Nyaya influenced Vedanta? This is another question. So, on first issue, the Nyaya and the Vedanta both accept the authenticity and authority of the Vedas. And this is also a very interesting point to note that as Advaita Vedanta is called Vedanta by Vedantins, some Nyayikas have also used this term for Nyaya system. Udayana Chari in Atmatattva Viveka, in the concluding remarks, very clearly states, states this point that this Nyaya is actually going one step further from Vedanta. Therefore, it is Charma Vedanta. So, Advaita Vedanta is acceptable, acceptable to some extent. But we should not stay there because we have to move from it. But where we have to move, we don't go away from that. But we have to enter to that gate. This is to say, for Udayana Charya, Advaita Vedanta is the gate of that very beautiful kingdom. Moksha Nagar. Moksha Nagar, Gopuraya Manatva, the term is used by him. That this Advaita Vedanta, this Sacha Avastha Nahaya, Moksha Nagar, Gopuraya Manatva. So that state should not be given up because if you reached there, this is to say you have reached at the gate of that Moksha Nagar. The the kingdom of Moksha, liberation. So, and secondly, according to me, both these systems are realist systems. Nyaya and Veda. It is assumed many times that Advaita Vedanta is not a realist system. Rather, it is an idealist system. But I have many arguments and some scholars like Star Wars, Professor T. R. V. Murthy and uh, uh, A. K. Chatterjee argue that this Advaita Vedanta is also a kind of realism, but it is not a naively realism, but it is a critical realism. So the term they used, it is a critical realism. So what is the Differencing point, departure point from Vedanta to Nyaya. And Gudayana Charya in Atma Tattva Vivek very clearly stated this. What is the nature of Atma? This is the question. And discussing this question, Gudayana Charya says, Shraddho Siche Upanishadha. If you are having Shraddha and uh, willing to know the nature of self, then consult the Upanishads. Madhyasthosiche Anubhavanipraj. If you are Madhyast, if you are not taking any side, you, if you are sitting in the middle, you are not going by Shastra, nor going by any Pramana, you should. Introspect your experience. 
एंड नैयारी को सीचे इफ यू आर नैयारी का जस्ट बी श्योर दैट इट इज नॉट लौकिक सुखानुभव स्वभाव दिस इज टू से द नेचर ऑफ आत्मन इज नॉट आनंद इट इज नॉट द नेचर ऑफ आत्मन द वर्ल्डली पीस व्हाट इज कॉल्ड आनंद सो आत्मन इज नॉट आनंद आनंद स्टोर सो दिस इज एंड हियर कमेंटिंग ऑन दीज पॉइंट्स रघुनाथ श्रोवणी मेक्स वेरी वेरी स्ट्राइकिंग ऑब्जर्वेशंस What is the meaning of Shraddha? Shraddha He says, which I mean Shraddha. What does it mean? Abhivejit Shuktyartha. Who has not actually examined the meaning of Shruti? That person is Shraddha. This is to say, the Nayayika's claim is that, this one, that we have understood the real meaning of Upanishads. therefore we are actually vela so this is the udayana acharya's claim and also this is the claim supported by ramana shri and the point is this one that both vedantis who argue that there is non dualism actually they have misunderstood vedant because why it is only the nayayika could understand the real meaning of real import of upanishads again raghunath shirmani says mitho viruddhanam shudina vina nyayam tatparyasya duravadharanam because there in shruti in upanishads there are so many opposite statements and those opposite statements what is the import of those Uh, opposite st- statements. What is the intention and what is the real meaning of those opposite statements that cannot be decided without nyaya? So one has to use nyaya, tarika. Then only the person can understand the Upanishads clearly, beautifully. And in their real essence, what is the meaning of madhyastha? Raghunath Shirmani makes it also very clear. Nyaya damayo rapakshapa. That person is sitting in the middle, who is not following the agam, and who is also not following the nyaya arguments. Okay. So if you are following the arguments, you have to follow the nyaya. If you are following the agam, you have to be shraddhaan. You have to see what appears clearly without uh, going into discussion, without uh, examining the real import of Upanishads, and in that way you will come to this conclusion that there is no dualism. And if you examine it. You will find that actually there is duality to it. So there are so many things, and I, as I told you, that the world is actually full of duality, full of duality. Therefore, uh, there is a need of dualism, and this is actually what Chant about does in Nyaya Manjari. In Nyaya Manjari. Jain the Bhakta very clearly states that actually, and here again, very very insightful remarks are there. Uh, insightful remarks in the sense that how Akshar came to this conclusion that knowing these sixteen padarthas, sixteen tapas, one gets liberated. उपो ज्ञाना निहस्य सादिक मम हाउ ही केम टू दिस कंक्लूजन एंड हियर ही सेज न च निष्प्रमाण कमर्थम एष निषिर उपदिशति इति भवितव्यमत्र प्रमाणेन सो व्हाट इज द प्रमाण ही सेज 
वैदिक विधि आत्मा ज्ञानम आत्मा बारे मन द्रष्टव्य श्रोतव्य मंतव्य विध्यासव्य एंड यू कैन सी देर इज अ मंत्र वेर इट इज तमेव विधि दिनाथ स्टेटमेंट he concluded akshapal concluded that knowing these tattva and knowing those tattva means knowing the pramayas what is pramay and it is also very interesting point to note that in nyaya sutras there are twelve pramayas and there is a long debate in nyaya vaisheshika tradition by others also that whether there are only these twelve pramayas if there are not more pramayas because what is the meaning of pramaya Pramay is actually whatever becomes object of prama, object of vertical cognition that is pramay. So everything like pramya, guna, karma, saman, vishesh, samvad, abhav, all these are pramayas. Just Professor Barkhe he told that every pradarth is pramay, but here Akshapad is telling that there are only twelve pramayas. Why is it so? So it is very clearly stated by. Uh, what's the aim in Ashir? That really there are more prameyas, but why twelve prameyas are counted, not others? Because knowing these truly, one gets liberated, and knowing if not one is not knowing them truly. This is to say, Esha Mithya Jnana Sansara Tattva Jnana. So, if you one is having mithya jnana, then there is a world. And if one is knowing these twelve tattvas truly, knowing, then it is actually from this knowledge, from tattva jnana, this mithya jnana is removed. And if mithya jnana is removed, then there is an order. And I am not going in that detail. This sansar is removed, and one is liberated. So, from um, Shruti mark here. This is important. This is taken. This is statement, and this is the basis of this statement of Akshapa. So, in Nyaya uh, Manjari, Jain Tabatta very clearly says that actually, and uh, in uh, in Nyaya Bhashya, Vasyana says. That actually mithya jnanam bhavidam veditavyam. So mithya jnana could be so many types. Atmani mithya jnanam nasti. Punascha, if there could be this type of mithya jnana that there is no atman. Second mithya jnana could be this body is the atman. Third mithya jnana could be the senses are atman. Fourth mithya jnana could be manas is the atma. And here, Jain the Bhakta tells, Yattu vijyana saptatma shabda dvaita darshanam tan mithya jnana deva. So all these are dvaita darshanam. Four kinds of dvaita darshanam. Four kinds of non-dvaitism. One is vijyana dvaita vada. Second is saptat dvaita vada. Third one is Atma Dvaita Vada and fourth is Shabda Dvaita These four are actually Mithya Gyana, false formations, false arguments. No, so if one says, one, if one believes that knowing, realizing non-dualism, one will be liberated, this is a kind of Mithya Gyana. So one will not get liberated knowing it. So, here, these four points, Vijyanat Dvaitvaj is actually the Buddhist position, Saptat Dvaitvaj is actually uh, Mandana Mishra's position, Atma Dvaitvaj is actually Acharya Shankara's position, Shabdat Dvaitvaj is actually Vakya Padiyya's position, Bhartya's position. And all these Advaitvaj are Mitra. So, actually, these debates in earlier Lecture, Professor Arindam Chakravarti very rightly point out, pointed out that these debates are actually there. How you grasp 
and naiko mujhe yes se matlab nahi tha so in that sense it should be understood and here there could be one way looking at it what is the priority on what basis you are running so he is saying and here again not only saying it but he is making a very good purush and this is the beauty of jand bhakta that whenever he is presenting the purush he is presenting the purush with full honesty and many a times i got uh, i became aware of very clear and um, could uh, understand the buddhist position more beautifully which were not available in pramana varthi and in some other texts so here again he makes a case he makes he makes arguments for non dualism he says that actually when one is perceiving something in that advaita darshanam mithya kathyate pratyut advaita darshanam avidya madhya api mithya gyan so this dvaita darshan whatever you are seeing as duality this duality is actually mithya and you know that this is the vedantic position also it is a position accepted by mandana mishra so how it is said that it is said that when you are perceiving you perceive the nature of padarth nature of reality you grasp the nature of reality and in order to become aware of the difference you need some years without taking into consideration the other you cannot be aware of bhav aware of aware of uh, difference so if you are not become aware of difference then you are not knowing the dvaita you are not knowing the duality so this is the position argued from the side of advaita varnas and again he is going and there are so many examples and he is citing those examples that mritti ke tev satyam and here uh, there are uh, uh, if you say that there is a pot there is a cross and some other things all these are actually in essence all these are made of uh, soil mritti ka so mrittika is the real thing all these are only uh, a kind of modifications and later on if you go <laughs> the real what what is left the real parmarth is actually satta because when you are what is changing if you take away that and let's suppose there was uh, a cloth there was a pot and pot is destroyed and when pot is destroyed something is left there kapal is left there and it is said pot is made of halves halves so half is available two halves are there and actually there was a, a different way of making pots in india two halves were made earlier and thereafter they were joined and in that way a pot was made. so if you make um, those um, halves different if you take them away there is no pot now there is only kapala there is there are only halves and if you break those kapalas they are left you you can find kapala and it, it goes on and in that way what is left they are left mrittika soil is left and if you follow every rejection there is a rejection but something is there something is left satta is there if you uh, say there was pot there was cloth there was and here you can see that was is common here everywhere there is 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 common everywhere so this satta is there and whatever you say you cannot get rid of this satta therefore it is said that satta is left at this satta is the na satta dvaita vad this is the position uh, accepted by uh, mandana mishra and we can say that the vedantic non dualism can be understood from two perspectives one is from the mandanas 
Mandana's perspective, Mandana's side, and second is there from Acharya Shankar's side. And uh, Jayanta Bhakt refutes both these positions. So in that way, first he establishes here. And again, what is the nature of Avidya? And he very beautifully, very clearly goes on refuting the Nyaya position first place and saying that actually Avidya is there and everything is the play of Avidya, play of ignorance. So what is the ignorance? Here again you can see and you can relate it with the lecture of Professor Arindam Chakravarti when he says that actually uh, Akshadva, there is a theory Akshadva. So here in uh, Mandana's position is this one. What is Avidya? Avidya is actually Agraha, not grasping. So, and here sometimes some places it is uh, uh, explained that Tattva, Nitva, Bhyam, Anirvachya. It cannot be clearly said that this Avidya is identical with Brahman or different from Therefore, it is Anirvach. Because there are two positions. Either you say Avidya is different from Brahman, or you sh should say Avidya is identical with Brahman. And the problem is there. If you say that Avidya is different from Brahman, there is a point of duality. There is one thing, Atman, this is to say Brahman, and there is Avidya. So there are two things. And if you say, no, no, Atman is not, Avidya is not different from Brahman, so there is a problem. Because the problem is this one, Avidya is Anirvachami, Avidya is Mitra. So you can see simply that Avidya is identical with Brahman, Avidya is Mitra, therefore Brahman is Mitra. So it will lead to a, a true and upsetting. Therefore, they would say, the position is left, that you can neither say that avidya or ignorance is identical with Brahman, neither, nor you can say that avidya is different from Tattva, Nitva, Bhyam, Anirubhachya. This is the position accepted by the research. And now the question is left, and uh, in the Vedantic system, we find these discussions in all the best, in Vedanta Sar, in Vedanta Parikasha, in Vivarana Pramaya Sangra, in other texts also, we find such distinctions. What is the, uh, and you can say, when we um, study the objections raised by Vishishta uh, Advaitins, Saptavida Anupapati, there are Anupapati, Ashraya Anupapati, Vishaya Anupapati, and so on. So those are arguments are taken here and very clearly stated that what is this, what is the um, place of avidya? And he concludes, jivatmana avidya nagramana. So avidya is actually jivatmana. This is to say the place of avidya is the atman, jivatma. And the object of avidya is brahman. So in that way, and this is the very famous position accepted by uh, Vachaspati Mishra. He says that the place of Avidya is Jiva and the object of Avidya is Brahma. And here again a question arises, whether these Jiva Atmans are distinct from Brahman or identical with Brahman. And if these are Distinct from Brahman, there will be a problem. Non-division is abolished. If the, uh, these are identical, then what is the point of this question? Because if you are saying the Ashtray of Avidya is Jiva and Jiva is identical with Brahman, that means Avidya, uh, the place of Avidya is Brahman. And this is the position erupted by Sarvagyatma Muni. He very clearly said, so this 
question goes there and there, and you can see, you can understand how different Vedantins have responded to this question. This question is responded by Vachaspati Mishra in a different way, by Sarvagyatmamani in a totally opposite way, different way. Here, how he yeah. takes this point. All those arguments he is taking, and he is saying that actually the problem is this one, that the Nayayika, the realist, does not understand the position of non-realist. Why? He is saying that avidya parikalpita eva brahma jivatma vibhava. Saj jivatma na avidya jivatma na So this is the very uh, accepted position according to Asaspati Mishra. So, but you are saying that the place of uh, avidya is a jiva and the object of avidya is brahma. So how, how there will be itare parashtra, there will be interdependency. If there is avidya, then there will be sansara. And if there is a sansara, then there will be avidya. So there will be interdependence. And how will you remove this interdependency? The Advaitins could say, and he, uh, Janta Bhatta, very clearly says that here the problem is not this with this argument. In this way, the answer can be given satisfactorily. Very clearly says that this interdependency is like this interdependency when you ask this question. What is earlier, whether the seed or the sprout? If you say that the seed was earlier, sprout was later, then there will be another question, how the seed came? You have to say earlier there was another sprout and there was another seed. And in that way, there will be an Adi Paramu. One tradition which is beginningless. And on this issue, the Nyayikas and the Advaita Vedantins must agree. Because according to Nyay also, there is Anadi Prabandha, Anadi Vidyadha. And here also Anadi Avidya Pradhika. So if your position, according to you, Anadi Vidyadha is acceptable, then for me, this Anadi Avidya is also acceptable. No problem at all. And here again, it is said, it is anadi beginningless. How will it, will it get removed? And very clearly says uh, Jayanta Bhatta from the side of non dualist that there is a color in atoms. There is a color in atoms. And that color is removed when it is put in the fire. So here the color is removed. In the same way, this avidya will be removed. And again, another example would be given from the Advaita inside, and but it is not given here. That according to Nyaya, there is a Prabhava. Prabhava is beginningless, but Prabhava is removed. When the thing is produced, the Prabhava is Prabhava gets removed. So that could happen to Avityas. So in that way, this question is uh, not up to the mark, and that question can be uh, read. And another question comes, how this avidya will be removed? How this avidya will be removed? And giving this uh, uh, answer to this question, Jayantabhant takes this question by heart as it is taken by the Advaita. Acharya Shankara says that actually all the word uses, all the pramanas operate in the field of mithya. So one avidya gets removed from another avidya. And this is one ignorance gets removed from another ignorance. And there, 
the example is given. If someone is caught by a snake, what is given by the doctor? The doctor gave him antidote, Ativish. And uh, there is no need to give another antidote to remove the effect of that antidote. So first there was a vision. There was oil poison. But the poison is removed, the, um, the effect of poison is removed, giving one antidote. And it, this antidote is actually a poison. But this poison should not be required to be removed by another poison. So in that way, this mithya jnana can be removed by another mithya jnana. And there is an example given by Bhartikari. Uh, Asapte Vartman is Tetwa, Tapa Asaptem Samia. One is sitting in the Rampur and uh, following the Rampur, actually going, uh, reaching at Rampur. So, in that way, it can happen here also. And going all these explanations very beautifully. And there is another question very uh, beautifully asked by. Other scholars. If there is only one Atma, how is it so that if one is suffering, another is not suffering? This is a very famous example. And second objection is raised that when one is liberated, why others are not liberated? Because there is only one Atma. Non dualism, your position is non dualist position. So, if one is happy, all should be happy. If one is suffering, all should be suffering. If one is liberated, everybody should be liberated. But why it is not happy? And here, the answer is given by Jandavata from Vedanta inside. And that answer is actually very true to Vedantic essence, Vedantic heart. Ekasyabhijivatmana Simply saying, when one is in the coming from in coming from the sunlight in the type of Greece Marino, and when he is very suffering, and if he is touching by his feet the cold water, he is enjoying it. But his other parts of body are suffering. So in the same way, there is only one Atman. And all these are actually someone is suffering and someone is not suffering. Actually, some all these are parts of this is the example given by Advaitins also that Anshan Sibhava. One is part, another is the whole. Anshan Sibhava example is given and taking shelter to, to that argument um, point, Jayanta Bhatta refutes that. So this all is actually Purva Paksha position. And in, from this, this st these statements, you can see how Jayanta Bhatta presented uh, the Advaitic position very pretty. And later on, he starts refuting and now I come into I am coming to that uh, position, that point. And the concluding remarks from the side of non dualists is this one. Brahma Darshana Vivato Nishray Sadibandhanam Veda Darshanam Dharam Sansara Virati. So who are fools who are seeing the difference? They cannot get liberated from this world. So only that person can get liberated who knows Brahman. So the knowledge of Brahman is actually cause of removal of suffering. 
So um, this shloka, Jayantara confused the non dualist position, and later on he argues and very beautifully. Very beautifully, you can see when I am reading two, two sentences because these two sentences are very beautiful. Kapata Nartakar has set Prakriya Purcho Parasane, Tadanu Dristan Paramparo Padane, Kinchiti Param Kaushala Navara. So you are very expert. I, I appreciate your expertise in making. In forming such examples, such beautiful examples like the uh, drama, like uh, Maya, and uh, in that way. But when the question comes uh, explaining the Pramana, what is the argument? What is the argument to prove your position? You are Tapasvi. Tapasvi, the word is used by uh, Tapasvi means the person uh, who is ascetic. You are ascetic. That means you don't know. And you can see he is not saying that you don't know, but he is saying Bhavanda Tapasvi. You are, so you can see how beautifully he is rejecting his position and uh, with you know, an honor and also with such position. And there are actually uh, two questions. He makes the points. He says that when you are arguing for non dualist position, whether this duality, this difference is rejected by Brahman, is rejected by Brahman. If this duality is rejected by Brahman, we can accept your position. Second, the position would be that the non difference. Non duality itself is proved by Brahma. And you can see that these two are completely different things. One point is that duality is rejected by Brahma. And another is non religion is proved, established by Brahma. What is your question? What you are going to say? And here he says, both these positions you cannot accept. Neither this nor that. You cannot say that duality is rejected by any pramana. Because every pramana operates in the field of duality. So duality cannot be rejected by. And when you have told that earlier, that when the pramana grasps the nature of thing, it only grasps the nature of thing, it doesn't grasp the difference, it doesn't grasp the uh, distinction, you are actually not knowing the nature of Brahmas. You are sitting on the same boat with the Buddhists. Buddhists are saying that only difference is cognized by it. You are saying, no, difference is not cognized, but non-dualism is cognized. Both both are wrong. Actually, the nature of Brahman is this one. Every Brahman here operates. Suppose, and we can take one example here. You, if someone asks you, do you recognize me? And uh, if you are not able to differentiate the person from others, do you recognize the person? Do you know the person? You know, you don't know. Because whenever you are recognizing a person, whenever you are knowing the person, it is very much required that you must know the person distinct from others. It is okay that the role of others will come later. The phase, the difference will be known later. Because difference needs to be known, taking into consideration of a peculiar person. For example, if I am going to know the difference of pot in the cloth or difference of cloth in the pot, these two are different things. First we recognize the cloth or first we recognize the pot. Then only 
taking into consideration the other, we can differentiate, we can know this distinction in this behavior. So, knowing behavior, Jayanta Bhatt is saying that behavior is something different and the distinction is something different. So, distinction is can be known without taking other things into consideration. But when you are knowing the thing, you are knowing it different, distinct from others. So this is the very much needed. And he gives very beautiful example. Suppose I am seeing my fingers. I am raising my hand and I am knowing these four fingers. And I am perceiving those these four fingers. What I am doing it now? I am knowing these four are my fingers, and that means these similarities are also perceived. And the dissimilarities from others is also perceived. So the distinction from others and the similarity which is present here, that is also. So these two are perceived together. And these two when are perceived together, therefore. There is no place of list position, and also there is no place for non list position. So he says, Pyavrit Tiranavit Tirava Parapek Shastu was to him, and he asam Kiranas to Hava, he Hava, Bhani Tekshabutish. So when the things appear in our perceptual cognition, those things appear asam Kiranas to Hava. Asamkira Subha means something distinct from others. Those are not known indistinct from others. Because if those are indistinct, that means you didn't recognize it. So every knowing is actually a kind of knowing that thing, something separating it from other things and also classifying it in some way. So in that way, when things are known, in that way, it becomes very clear that non-dualism cannot be established in the Praman. Because the Praman goes always against it. He saying, when you know the blue as blue, it is not possible to uh, know the blue without disting distinguishing it from yellow. Some persons who are colorblind persons, they could not distinguish these color, different colors. But when they are not able to distinguish colors, they don't perceive those colors separately. So when you are perceiving colors separately, that means you must distinguish them others. So that means without delimiting something from others, without cutting it from others, you don't know it. So there is a role of our chain of what Professor Arindam had been talking about. Tasma. Therefore, he clearly shows that in perception we must know the distinction. Tasma itare itare bhimitta paratha swarupa gradhitva. Because perception grasps the reality distinct from others, therefore it is very much proved that perception is not establishing knowledge. Secondly, Shabdhanu Mahanaya Vastu, Sambandha Grana Dhina Siva, Sambandha Grana Dhina Surushaya Vyaparare Ol Bheda Mantra Yana Swarupa Mepanava Kalpate. Inference is always operates in distinctions. If there is no distinction, inference will not operate. Whenever you are inferring, there must be some distinction. When you are inferring fire in the mountain, seeing the smoke, there must be distinction between fire and the smoke. Otherwise, if there were identity, if it is known, the other is known. 
in that case there will not be any possibility of concurrence and that goes with shabda pramana also therefore it is established that through any pramana you cannot establish that relation secondly if you take other position that bhed is actually pramana bhed is actually rejected by other pramanas so here bhed is not actually pramana bhed it can be said that bhed is pramana bhed and the non dualism non dualist philosophers advaita vadins vedantis how do they prove that there is a non dualism they say There are, there are sentences in the Vedas, in Vedantas. Nehnanasti kincha, sarvam khanvidam brahma. So sarvam khanvidam brahma, it is very clear, this is. So everything must be brahma. And if everything is not brahma, you have to accept that this Vedic sentence is wrong. This sentence is false. And on one hand, you are saying that you accept the authenticity of Vedas. Authority of Vedas, and on the other hand, you are saying that this sentence is not right. This sentence is wrong. How will you do? How will you accept? Either you have you say that no, I don't accept the authenticity of Vedas, or you accept the authenticity of this sentence. Secondly, there is a sentence Nehana Nasti Kincha. This sentence clearly rejects, negates the duality. So non-dualism will be established. So other way, this is to say, this duality is praman bhadi, rejected by a pramana. And here again, very beautifully, Jain the doctor says that actually these are actually arthavad, and arthavad cannot be accepted in its uh, in abhidhayat. Why it is arthavad? Because This is Arthavada. Due to this fact, and there are some Arthavadas in uh, Mimansas. Mimansas are very beautifully explained, and now so many sentences are the way on the part. They have said that this is actually Arthavada. Why? Because Amna is the Arthavada and Thakya Madhya Dharma. This is a very bold statement given by uh, Mimansas that. The essence of Veda is actually Vidhi. The Vedas are saying to perform something, and where it is not saying to perform something, all those are actually Nirathak. Nirathak means meaningless, and it is it also very objectionable point because Mimamsa also accepts the authenticity of Veda. So it is said, "Istu tera fene Vidhi naam sihu." So those statements which are Actually, uh, not talking about any kind of action, any kind of vidhi. Those are actually stuttyat. Stuttyat means for praising, praising some action. Let us take one example from the Mimamsa Kaj position. Mimamsa, the one example is this one: Bhayavik Shepishtha Devi. The the air is very fast. God, powerful God. You can see that this is a, a factual statement, and Vedas don't deal with these factual statements. Rather, Vedas deal with injunction. This is to say, they convey something to perform, like Vishwajita Vijay Swarga Kama, one who is willing to go to Swarga even. Should perform Vishwajit Yag, so you can see that this is uh, all those sentences which are coming in Vedanta part. All those can be uh, understood me uh, Arthava as Arthava, but the Nyaya position and the Vedanta position is something different. They would not accept that all the sentences which are talking, which are actually factual, and for the Nyaya class, all the Vedanta are factual. Vidhi Vakya is also factual. Are they? They translate Vidhi Vakya in that way that they become a factual statement. So the Nayya, the Mimans, the Vedanta say that you don't say 
that Arthur Vedas are one of the talking about Vidhi. So how could you say Arthavad? Nayayika Jantavatta says that actually the problem is this one. If I accept your position, then also you have to accept many sentences as Arthavad. There is one example. Uh, Diva Na Dhritishe the meaning is this one that in the day we see only the smoke but not the flames of the fire. Would you accept it? We clearly see that in the day also we perceive the flame. So in that sense, what would you do with this sentence? You have to say that this is Arthava. So in that way, you have to conclude that all those sentences which are going against perception or inference This is to say, those sentences are not meaningful in their primary sense. Rather, they should be understood in the secondary sense. And if we understand them secondary sense, that is the same statement here. When it is said, Nehana Stikinchan, Ekameva Dhritiyam, so there is only one, this is to say, there is only one like Brahman, Ishwar, no one else. Because Brahman is the Ishwar, Brahman is Ishwar for the Nehaika. Nehana Nastikinchan, there are no many gods, only one god is there. So in that way, we can understand the meaning of all these sentences. Therefore, there is no Pramana. Uh, there is no pramana uh, to establish the uh, non-dualist position. And again, he says that the non-dualist Advaitins actually confusing two terms. What, what are these two terms? They are not able to make a distinction between what is non-eternal and what is mithya. So, what is non eternal? I'm sorry, what is non eternal and what is asat? So, when they say asat, this is a very famous example given by the Advaitins that satchen na vartheta, asatchen na patiyeta, asatchen na patiyeta, and asatchen na nishedheta. This is the last. So, he is saying that. What is existent, that only can be rejected, that only can be destroyed. What is not existent, that cannot be destroyed. So for you, Maya cannot be destroyed. Why? Because according to you, Maya is like Shasha Singha. So if Maya is like Shasha Singha, how Shasha Singha can be destroyed? And Avidya Chair is very much necessary. Therefore, this non advaitic position is not tenable, cannot be accepted at all. So here, uh, some more points, uh, I think the time is running. So in five to 10 minutes, some more points I am taking here. And here again, some other examples he has taken to uh, establish the Nyaya position in favor of duality. He says that what you are told, there is only one Atma Vada, only one Atman, there are no many Atmans. So here he said that there is a there is one Vyavastha, one order. When one is happy, all are not happy. One is unhappy, all are not unhappy. This is to say now earlier he refuted this position, but now he is coming to this. Why? Well, because he had told earlier that these are these all are only examples, and with examples you cannot do anything if there is no support, if there is no pramana. So earlier he established that actually there is no pramana to do around dualism. Thereafter, he is coming to this conclusion that how oh, it is coming. So again, he's saying, Atma Bharat Vyavahara Sitcha Sarvajana Pratimisiddhasya Dhulapan Navartya. 
how how does you try but you cannot uh, take away this kind of vyavahara whoever is a realized person the person also uses these terms manobuddhyankar chittani maham acharya shankar se so um, word he has to use so in that way whenever he is using any word so it, it will not be possible and again this example what he is going to do going to explain uh, he says that actually anadrishte ja sukha sadhane vastuni smarana sandhana purvak ichha desha adhikari jatasya anyasya anyatha anyatra anubandha so what i have perceived i remember that and if i again see suppose i have an eaten mangoes langra mango i call many times dibyang mangoes so when i eat that mango so i whenever i see i remember that okay so i can desire to eat that if i have eaten something and if i have experienced some pain from something I remember that and i avoid that it doesn't happen to us and here when you have given the example of the person that paade mein vedana shirasi mein vedana so here this example is not applicable here because there is only one place where all memories are stored and here if this way of the case if one have experienced something problematic all person should have got it back it doesn't happen if i cut my finger i will avoid my neighbors and this person is case getting suffer suffering and other person is enjoying again ekasmis chavita age moksha masadhi bhavati sansarinam annesham anandya darshana one is related but all other persons are not related to them again you are making a very a uh, problematic point aham pratyasya pratyagatma vakte hai paratra asambhava so this aham pratyay and i am having aham pratyay you are also having aham pratyay and when you make a distinction like acharya shankar टेशन जगत विजय चित्र जगत इज विचित्र वन इज सफरिंग and there is happy so all this can happen due to dharma and if you don't accept the dualism there will not be any dharma and this kind of sansar will not be there and again this atma vedha is the, the distinction of atman is vishpashta siddhatva very clearly perceived and experienced therefore here it cannot be established and here it is saying what the examples are given those examples what you say about those examples he says taptalo has phuling ka ghatakash pad vedana drishtant karamba sicha nishedha krita ebeti ekatma varo api na yukti man iti param vistare so that all these are refuted so uh, the ekatma varo cannot be established so i think uh, i have made a case for duality so at this point i uh, conclude my lecture thank you very much for listening with such a presence thank you, thank you professor bishra so the floor is now open
Actually, if we accept that Vedanta view, Vyavaharika and Paramarthika. So, what we presented was the Vyavaharika. Actually, I am dealing with this Vyavaharika and the Paramarthika. So, in the two Saman Vaya, so the Vasi. Acharya Shankar says that there is a difference between Brahmakyanis Vyavahar and the Jeeva, Jeeva Chakra. So, a person with so much gold, then his gold is stolen, then that person becomes unhappy. But the same person, when becomes Atmatya, if someone steals his or her gold, then he doesn't any make sense. It means he is, he is totally happy, totally in the same state. So, first thing is there is a difference in the Vyavahar in the general and the Arm. Second position, second thing, that uh, you started with that uh, this is the logic is only the domain of Nayayika. So this is not the true case because it is from Rigved and even in, uh, in Upanishads. So Tark has been lauded always. And uh, so Manan is equal to the, the analysis. Ravanam Mananam Nidhyasana. So Manan is when you hear some statement then you must analyze. This is the meaning of mana. But what kind of logical analysis? Logical analysis should not go against the foundational state. This is the position of Achar Shankar. Agam Abhirodhi Why? Because logic is based on your intellectual power. And intellectual power varies from person to person. So a person with intellect, intellectual power can explain anything in his own way. But the, the person with more intelligence power, he can refute or she can refute the same position. But has not been established by other Acharya Shankar. It has been established by Buddhist seers. So, Eka Sarina Advaita, Ek Meva Dutiyam. There are many, many statements in Upanishads where Rishi says that state is nothing but the non-dualistic state. So, this term or this kind of uh, experience or philosophy is not uh, established by Acharya Shankar. It, 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 he is just uh, propagating it. So, first thing is this. Second, that uh, if you are taking all Vedantic statements as Arthwar, then what about Nasdi Su? What about uh, Ambarni Su? There, which he clearly says, there, there was only one reality. Now with Turasi, Amritam Nautari, Sadasi, 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 So there was nothing except a singular reality with his own sustaining power. Swadeya Tadeka, with all his sustaining power. So if there was only one reality, where is the instrumental cause? Or hurt, but you can give instrumental cause the pot maker, and uh, with his effort, you can make so many pots. And uh, Mritika is the is the samvai karan, and the other is the samvai karan. That is upadhi nimit karan. But how can you explain that? In the sixth chapter of Chandogya. Sir, 
Acharya Sankara defines a duet. Duet means when someone is seeing Vrittika and he goes to some other village for four or five hours, and when he comes back, he sees there are many pots there. So the same soil became many. So what is now the understanding between the pots with name it for and the soil, the, the original cause of it, these pots? So when one becomes many, then there is no instrumental cause. Everything is inherent. So, if you are looking at from this uh, materialistic world of this sansar, then there may be the same interpretation as you have mentioned. Acharya Sankar clearly says that that they have compared to you here, but pramana plain consider. Logikam tad vade vedam pramanam tvarna nishaya. This is in the fourth sutra, Gam Sutra Bhas. He, when you are looking at reality from your sense organs point of view, from your analytic point of view, then uh, this is a this is very good interpretation. But Rishi also says that yada panchavati shanti jnana ni manasasara buddhischan vichetra kitamaho parmamati. When these senses fail, when mind fails, when buddhi fails. After that, you can understand that truth. So there are two layers of understanding. One understanding from, as you have mentioned, from the Yaika's point of view, and other is the soul experiential reality where there is a what you have said, Nevna Nastic in China. And uh, and uh, you have also mentioned about the the knower, knowable object, even, even in Kenok Nishad, Rishi clarified that it is Viditat Adhi, or Viditat Adhi. So, when you are talking in this uh, society, and if you, if you know something, then there is a clarity. But that knowledge cannot be compared to that uh, knowledge of ultimate truth. Rishi had clearly mentioned it. So there are two layers of understanding. And uh, I think now in modern science and Newtonian science, it is now indicating, indicating where Newtonian science believe in this pluralistic reality and uh, has developed a model to understand this reality. But Werner Heisenberg said, when he is explaining the third particle, he said, when I go to experiment, it seems that nature is asking question. Is your modern is, a, is useful for understanding the subtle aspect of reality? So, what model you are applying to explain all pramanas, all objects, or prameyas, the same model is applicable to understanding the original state of consciousness. This is this is this is Achar Sangar is dividing, and uh, he is not. Uh, he is not uh, rejecting this uh, pluralistic reality. He is always accepting. But you have to move from this plurality to singularity. And uh, regarding Shastra Brahman, Shastra Brahman, you have mentioned that, uh, uh, as he said, Abhadit Gyan Vishyatum Satyatum. What is Mithya? You all know. I am just, just ready. Putting this statement before it before you. He was talking what he did. Satyam Gyanam Anantam Brahma. They are sat means what? Yad Ruben Yad Nishitam Tadiyadi Nam Yadi Janati Tatsa. Trikala Ba. And on rhythm, the opposite meaning on rhythm means Yad Ruben Yad Nishitam Tadiyadi Vyav Chakra. So, Vyavicharat means all change, changing reality is under the Mithya. So, Mithya is a very technical term. And uh, also Asat. Asat is not Sata Abhava. It is a Sat Dhinam Sat Sadrisam Kichi. So, it is not absolute reality. But 
it is different from that and it is very similar to that. In, in also in Agyan, Agyan, I just uh, try to explain one thing. Agyan means what from the Yaritas? Agyan is absence of Brahmas. But, uh, but in Vedant, Agyan is Gyan Sadrisam Gyan Bhinnam So, taking all this into account, Advait Vedant goes very logically, but that uh, they they accept the the authenticity of Ved and uh, and uh, uh, in Sast Praman, just last sentence, Sast Praman, you have rightly mentioned that uh, that uh, Sast is under Mithya. It is clear. But Mithya had three aspects. One is Tamas, other is Rajas and Sast. So the Rajas and the Tamas aspect of Mithya can be destroyed by the Sattvic aspect of it. That Sattvic aspect is Sastrakya. The Sattvic aspect is Upanishadikya. And through Sattvic, Achar Sankar says, Sastram to Adhyanam Nivartiya. Not to Dham Karmi Karu. Brahm is not the object for Sastra. Sastra is for destroying the ignorance. So in this way, everything has been explained systematically and you have what you have presented. There are hundreds of questions, but I, I yes, stop there. Yeah. Thank you so much. But may I just also ask everybody to consider something? By the way, it's a fascinating discussion. Uh, we clarified some, some points and raised many more. About our understanding of dualism and non dualism. But let me take you back to Kautilya's question, right? Can you also explain just a little bit how this helps with success in the world or success beyond the world? How, does, how can this knowledge reduce suffering or somehow make our life in the world a little bit more, how shall we say, aligned? So th that is the big question, right? So if you're going to basically say that this knowledge is useful in some way, as the as Vatsan also claims, as Kautilya also claims, and can you also throw light on that aspect? Yes. I think it would be very useful. What does this mean? Can I take one minute? Yes, yeah, one minute. Actually, what model has developed by Nayar is always acceptable by all Shastra. Yeah. As methods, yeah. no doubt. Only there are differences in the in the nature of reality. Three suppositions. Three suppositions. So this is one thing. The same method has been applied when in Vatsya and said uh, there there are four constituents required for understanding reality. Pramata, Praman, All have been applied by us. Also, Jayanta but, but accept this. The, the only problem is to understand reality, reality at two layers from Advaitin's point of view. And the method, the whole asyad have been written in Adhikaran. And Adhikaran is just very much similar to the Panchavaya part. Vishyo, Vishya, Seva, Guru, Pakshas, Tatur, Tarun, Sangatis, Cheti, Panchavaya. So, I think from methods point of view, we can, we can take a position, there is no difference, and in this way we can frame a, frame a structure, and through that structure we can take position, I think, from methods for point of view, and also from reality. I see. Thank you. Yes. So, okay, let me speak from there. Maybe it should be. Okay. Oh. So, now the question you raised so many questions and also uh, asked and clarified some points. 
first you started with the Devahara, the Devahara Atmanya. And you told that Acharya Shankara you will see that Devahara Atman is it actually. And there is no point of difference in uh, Nyaya Purusha also. Because the Atmagya Nyaya also is not uh, suffering if gold is taken away. So this kind of Devahara is very much similar in the case of Atmagya Nyaya Purusha. Okay? So <laughs> there is no problem. Secondly, when you are told that Manan is a logical analysis, it is very beautifully accepted by Ahudaya Acharya. Nyaya Charchi Yamisha Se Mananat Yapadeshva Upasana Iva Kriyate Samanantara. So there is no problem. Again, to told that Yadne Anu Vipokti Arata Kushali Ranamatra Thi Abhyukta Tarai Rangi Rangi Thi Vita Padjane. There is also no problem in that. The problem is that third question you raised, how to explain, how the Nayayakas will explain Nasariya Sutta and all other Suttas, where are they, and there are so many, there are so many such examples. The point is taken by the Nayayakas is this, that actually in Upanishads and in Vedas, you find many different points, and if I take uh, the Buddhist 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 statement. Some statements on where I have found when it is said that Abhini Shomi and Patumar something like that. Some examples I don't remember very beautifully. That can be understood in a completely different way. That meaning can also be understood. So, what will be the meaning of the sentence? What is the deciding factor? What does it mean? Whether the primary meaning should be accepted or the secondary meaning? How to decide? Actually, you are taking the uh, debate into mysticism. <laughs> and the Nayayakas always oppose this kind of mysticism. So here, for the Nayayakas, and they made the point very clear at the outset. When I said, Sarbhoste Upanishadahat. And it is said that if you are hiding the thumb, so you say, okay, in Nasadi Yashnuk, it is said, I will accept. So this is called Shraddha. Because you are accepting what is written in, in it without examining. So, Nayai, if you are Nayai, then you have to examine it, whether it is in coordination, in coordination with perception in other Pramanas or not. And if it is in coordination, if it is coordinating with other pramana, then we will accept. Otherwise, secondary meaning will be accepted. So no problem at all. And even if you are saying that taking Nasadi is so we have we have to accept non-dualism. What about Vishwata Shakshura the Vishwata Mukho Vishwata Bahura Vishwata Spar? Some Bahu Dhan Dhamadi Samaya Prayu Dhyava Bhumi Janayam Devayaka. What about this shloka? Sambhavam Yam Dhamma 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 Sambhavam Yam Vishwadova means we do using our hands. So, how long our hand is moving, I, we are able to move that. But he is Vishwadova because he is able to move everything, whatever, away, whatever is near. So, Vishwadova, Vishwadaspa, we move as long as our legs allow. He is capable of moving from here to the so one God is creating everything with Paramahansa. So when you are saying that the world is created from Maya, this is not acceptable because whenever you are talking about Maya, it is actually you are making it mystic. And the Nayayaka is already proposed. 
ओके एंड अगेन विदितार्थी अविदितार्थी यू हैव कोटेड इट यू नो ब्रिस्टिक वर्ड हैज बीन यूज्ड बाय मी नो कपट रचना दैट इज कपट रचना द वर्ड इज द वर्ड इज देवसे संविदेव भगवति वस्तु पदमे only the experience of common man yeah is the yeah, this is the starting point and from starting point there is no place and the really you have to give privacy to shraddha if you are with and we are not willing to give privacy privacy yeah, that is the point that's why it's fine yeah because what is that so if tarik is primary there is no place for a non believer if shraddha is primary then there is a place for the hand first you believe thereafter you are in only the air person no only the person is correct that is when you accept with sorry so anywhere in where rishi said that these are atwar first when well, it is your creation okay when the mansak says no. that all vedantic statements are arthwa no. this is his understanding so so similar so, so, what what again is bagwar it is just kind of praise when you say aham brahmasmi this is just a kind of praise so this is not the reality so anywhere rishi says that these statements are arthwa and Yeah. First question, Acharya Shankar said you you are misinterpreting Rishi statement. It is Shruti Han. What Rishi have said, you are not accepting. So this is Shruti Han and Ashrut Kalpana. What Rishi have not said, you are creating that kind of understanding. First, also. When Brindaranyas first for your response, Ma Indro Maya Bhi Purlu Bhiye. This is not Acharya Shankar's statement. This is the statement of Rishi in Dikwe, also in Brindaranya Kupus. First, so you cannot say that uh, this is the statement created by Advaitins. First, second. When in Brindaranya Kupus said when Bhamdev. Where Ahambaramnas made statement has been given. Bamdev, Rishi Bamdev, realized Atma. So, Sarva, he became everything. He became sun. He became moon. He became everything. Similarly, in Park Sutra, where Ahambarani said, "Aham Rudrevi Basubhisharan." Whenever I want, I create everything, and I become. so what that kind of experience has been done by the yogis acharya shankar say when they are living in plurality it starts with plurality ends with plurality then have they experienced the true nature of atma etadatma idam sarvam when atma becomes everything so if they have not experienced they are just playing with logic Then how can we accept their statements? So now this one, you please. Uh, very good. First point: Our weather, our hours is uh, talked about in Vedas by Rishi. The point is this one: that Acharya Shankar himself accepts our hours somewhere. Acharya Shankar is very clear in saying, "No, Shruti Shatam, Ghatam Patai do Mishita. No, Shruti Shatam, Ghatam Patai do Mishita." Even the hundred sentences of Shruti cannot make the pot clot. So here, hundreds of sentences. How? It's non-duality. Duality, duality. Non-duality. He is going against his own statement. Secondly, when you are saying Indro Maya Adi Purnu Bhutiya, very beautiful statement. But the essence of the real. Meaning of this is not understood by other things, but the real meaning is understood by the other things. This is the question. So, sarvam abhavat. When you are saying so, sarvam abhavat. What is the meaning of it? You have to say in our day, day to day life, when someone acquires so much money, 
बिल्कुल से पुरोहित राजा समृत्त सर्वम बट वेन एवर देर इज ए रियलिटी वेर देर इज नो रीच ऑफ यूर सेंसेस योर योर माइंड देन हाउ कैन यू एक्सप्लेन दैट देन इट इज ओनली वेदर विच आर द प्रमाण रियलिटी इज नॉट रियलाइज by the nay i got by therefore they are saying so you are bringing it in a place where it cannot be known to these pramanas and there after you are yourself uh, uh defining something yourself you are creating something and therefore you are arguing this is a naisa tarkena madhiravaniya naisa tarkena ultimate to naisa tarkena madhiravaniya in this sense atma vare drashtavya shantavya mandavya nidhyasitavya knowing the atman one uh, becomes liberated so this statement should not be rejected by that arguments those arguments like the charvaka last last sentence स्टेटमेंट ऑफ and uh, in society we see so many things are are, are going on but yatra tu sarvam atmaiva bhut when you become identical with that reality same truth then how can you act how can you use pramanas so i think uh, this is again stupid again it is not obvious to the mind when you are saying yatra dvaita miva bhavati So if dwaita is not there, how could you talk about dwaita being? If dwaita is there, if sasasang is not there, you cannot say that this is like sasasang. This by plurality there is singularity. So these two are opposite things. So let's talk about very briefly the process. Yeah. You you want to try something? Yeah. I just wanted to conclude by today. Wait. Then then he has a question. But for that maybe. Yes, please. Uh, Sanjay, do you have any questions at all? Yes, I do. I, yeah, very quick question. Actually, I uh, very much enjoyed the this entire discussion. But I had a question about uh, a deeper point, which is about cognition. It's come up in a few places: perception, bhed, difference, etc. And I was wondering if there was some, and I'll get into this uh, as well. Uh, definition of cognition: What does it really mean to? Um, You use the term grasp, Professor Mishra. That's actually the title of one of my books, um, because I was grasping for an understanding of that. What is cognition? In I know it's a little bit from left field, but I just want to ask. Grasping, grasping. What is cognition? Cognition. 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 Cognition.
دارین کوونیش گوهر از ट <laughs> Yeah. There is a detailed discussion of the process of cognition in Nyaya, but that requires a lot of time because it begins from the sense organ and object, Indriyartha, Sanni, Karsha. The sense organ, it comes in contact with an object, then the sense organ comes in contact with the internal organ, that is manas or mind. So first it comes in contact with the external objects, Indriyartha Sannikarsha, Indriyam Arthena Sayujyate, then Indriyam Manasa Sayujyate, internal organ, mind comes in between. And last but not the least, mana, Atman, Atma Manasa Sayujyate. So Atman is the abode of cognition. The cognitions are experienced by Atman. Mind is the mediator, internal organ, sense organs, the external sense organs, they help in internalizing the external objects. This glass is here. But when I know that this is a glass, the external aspect of the glass is taken into my inner sense through the contact. And that contact again is of many types, six types of Indriyartha Sannikarana. Different details are there, but ultimately consciousness. Atma, the Atma is defined as Jnana Dikaranam Atma. Atman is the abode of Jnana. What is Jnana as defined by Prabhupada Mishra? Sarva Vyavahar Gretur Buddhir Jnana. Jnana is the instrument for every type of Vyavahara. Vyavahara has two meanings. Shabda Prayoga, Bhasha or linguistic interaction. and also the mutual interaction that we have with each other. This all is called or generated by Jnana. This is also known as Buddhi. Buddhi and Jnana are equivalents in Nyaya, but not in Vedanta and Sankhya. So there are technicalities which are very, very different. I think that will help because that's the only brief answer I can give, but there are many details. I have a paper. on consciousness and cognition in vaisheshika thank you professor sir great that sure and for a couple of minutes thank you i'll just leave you this um, quote when um, um ibm uh, watson won a J american quiz show called jeopardy um everyone uh, felt a lot of pride for watson everyone except watson itself because it had no sense of pride So I just leave you that part. So coming to the discussion, an uh, interesting debate that was going on. Everybody was enjoying. Although Professor Mishra himself is a Vedantin and Nayaika, same is true of Professor Ramnath Jha. Tomorrow you will listen his paper on Navya Nayaya, but he is also a Veda core Vedantin. He is. A more shrug, shruddhavan Vedanta. <laughs> Professor Mishra was reading a paper based on Nyaya Manjari written by Jayanta Bhatta while he was imprisoned by the king of Kashmir. He was in a cell, prison cell. He had no access to library. He writes that I am in sitting in a dark room with no facilities, but he has written such an encyclopedic work, Nyaya Manjari, is a beautiful text. which and i am amazed that so much of vedantic purvapaksha and its reputation same is true of buddhist also 
and Jayanta does not even spare his own fellow beings, the Mimamsakas. He refutes them like anything. So he has given the Purva Pakshas in full detail, then he refutes them. And in Indian philosophy, we have a tradition that when you study Nyaya, become a Nayaika. When you study Vedanta, behave like a Vedanta. So Professor Mishra adopted that while he was presenting a paper and while he was defending his position, he was a true Nayaika. <laughs> and because Professor uh, is a Vedantin, so he had his questions. But I think all the schools of Indian philosophy, they are not disputing. Just like all the rivers go to the ocean and their water becomes one. Similarly, there are different paths, but all of them reach to the same goal. The goal of Indian philosophical schools, be it Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism, Sikhism, the goal of all these schools is to reach us to the state where there is no Hawaii. You call it Nishraya, sir. You call it Apavarga, Mukti, Moksha, Nirvana, or whatever. So they are not di disputing essentially. There is only a debate and difference in their approach. So at the empirical level, Nyaya approach is valid. But at the experiential level or at the spiritual level, Vedantic view, this is based on the Upanishad. And the beauty is that all of the six schools, they all believe in the statement of Veda as the supreme authority. For Vedanta, it is mainly the Upanishad. And for Nayaika, it is basically the Veda itself. But the question that Professor Ramnath Jha raised about the Arthavada, I would just like to remind you that there are two statements in the Brahmanas. And Brahmana texts are in between the Veda Sangita and Upanishad. Taittiriya Brahmana, Ananta Vai Veda. So there is no limit to the Vedic knowledge or Vedic interpretation. We can interpret it many ways. Similarly, there is another statement which is quoted by Yaska in his Nirukta. Paroksha Priya Vai Devaha Pratyaksha Dvisha. The Vedic statements should not be taken as they appear. There are hidden meanings behind them. So, Paroksha is the dear, more dearer to the Devas. Paroksha Priya Vai Deva Pratyaksha Visha. Last but not the least, you said Tar Naisha Tar Kyana Mati Rapali. But in the same tradition, Yaska quotes a legion and he says, Tarka is Rishi. Tarka itself is Rishi. Uh, yeah, not only that, he says when the rishis were going and they were declining. You see, in Indian Hindu tradition, we don't have the Darwinian theory of evolution. We have a theory of devolution. So when the higher class of rishis were going down, they were declining. The second grade of rishis asked them, you are going, who will teach us? You are the ones who realize the truth yourself, direct. How will we learn? And they said, Tarko Rishi. Now onwards, your own reasoning will be your Rishi. So Tarka is, is very much respected in our tradition. And yes, Tarkin Anu Sandhakte, Sir Dharmam Veda, Netara. Tarka and Shraddha both are required. Mere Shraddha will be blind faith. And mere reasoning will take us nowhere. So we have to have a blend. The beauty of Indian tradition is that it is holistic and integral. Here, the reasoning and faith both are intervening. Thank you. So, yes, we have, sir. Yes, parents, you have the value of two minutes. Yes, absolutely. Please. <laughs> sir, I was inspired. But please turn on your microphone. Uh, I was uh, I inspired to say something. Uh, after seeing uh, the very hotly debated issue between the two learning scholars, and uh, my uh, mind uh, went to the sixth scripture, which draws heavily 
from uh, Vedanta and the Indian tradition of thought. Apparently, conflicting statements are resolving. They can be reconciled. In, in the scriptures, when we see two differently conflicting statements, actually there is no conflict. In uh, Guru Granth, this one statement, E Jagatu Veneta Apahar, very nice book, this mountain of smoke. But there's another statement, E Jagatu Sachye Ki Hai Kodri Sachye Ka Vichibas, reality to live. Nanak Ke Kartivar Nam. Or is Jagmeh Karni Sari? Doing, performing, playing a role. If the, even the Sikh cardinal principle accommodates apparently two conflicting thoughts, Ekamka, from where Gurgans begins, that it is three dimensional reality of God. That it is one formless and it has a form also. Now, form and formless are apparently conflict. In fact, those statements, which uh, when one scholar was accusing the other, that you are trying to draw into the domain of the mystical, <laughs> the mystical statements of the scriptures are meant to perform a different role. They are, they are employed to raise us, us spiritually, to detach us from the materialism uh, of this world. Therefore, these uh, conflicting statements never conflict, never contradict. As Professor Kumar said, that like the ocean, the much one. Indistinguishable belief. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, again, thank you so much to Professor Mishra and to Professor Cha for showing us a little bit of how the system, how the Shastra, or the debate that tradition actually work. And of course, the ultimate compliment, uh, I believe, uh, one Buddhist. Who was being quoted as defining the Buddhist tradition better than the Buddhists themselves? So the uh, Jayanta Bhatta uh, defines the Buddhist tradition better than indeed some of the performers of Buddhism in order to criticize it. So I think that is the ultimate compliment to the scholar that you define your opposing viewpoints better than the opponent could have. I think uh, if that is uh, the kind of level of clarity that we seek in our argument. Then of course we would have made real progress. So that is one kind of progress. But again, I would urge all the speakers uh, in the other three in the three days that we have left to enlighten us a little bit. Those of who are those of us who are not technical scholars, not technicians of Nyaya, to tell us how these wonderful tools may be used to make our lives a little bit better. And in two senses, right? Make make our lives. Most, I mean, whatever it is that we see, Dharma, Artha, Kama, a little bit more of success in this life and a little bit more of success in the other life, which is reduction of suffering, moksha. So, if that aspect could be talked about uh, in some way, that I think would be good. And Professor Kumar, one request, and I'm raising this on behalf of Professor Sarma, which is that. Um, you mentioned that a condition happens, you know, through four layers of sand, as it were. Right? You have the object, then you have the senses, then you have the mind, and then you have consciousness. And things can go wrong anywhere. So how, and furthermore, different uh, theories of knowledge in India have a different view. For example, uh, some traditions do not consider Bhutti separately, but it's conflated with the mind, some others don't. So I think if I may ask this question on behalf of uh, Sanjay, that uh, 
can be elucidated at some point. Maybe not, I mean, we have our fixed limits. Uh, we are all given some specific topics. If it comes up in those, I think that would be great. If not, I think the Nyaya theory of cognition should certainly be uh, explained in simple terms so that we can see where the errors can be in and be aware of those errors, and that itself would have been a big service. So in some sense, we use these very fine instruments without really realizing that we have these different layers. And those layers, in my view, we talk about neural networks, right? They build layers upon layers of processing, and that's how uh, knowledge is built up. That's how associations are done. You build associations at lower level, then you build associations at higher levels, then higher levels, and there's no limit to how you can modularize it. And that's basically what is so wonderful about generative grammar and our, our neural networks in particular. That's how mind works. That's how our brain works. But that's also how knowledge works. So we would love to get some thoughts on that. So that's a request. Can I suggest yes, that we have a panel discussion on Monday? Yeah. We can have that panel discussion on theories of cognition. Sure. Some part of it can be done. Yeah. So we can you here. Yeah. So thank you very much indeed. We've gone a little bit over time. And I especially apologize to Sanjay because he's two and a half hours ahead of us in Kuala Lumpur. But he stayed to us, uh, he stayed with us throughout the day, and of course, um, he's going to address us tomorrow. So thank you, Sanjay. Really appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. And by the way, a little bit of a plug. Uh, his book on grasp is literally about that. How do we grasp as students? Uh, the concepts that we are taught and in a way that we can apply them. So he's been grappling with all these issues as an engineer and as a person, you know, who has the, uh, so he's not here for introducing him a little bit um, from that point of view. So all of us are grappling with this uh, in different ways. I'm grappling with it. How do you build better people? How do you build better leaders in any field? How do you build better institutions? Because unless we have final thinking, none of this can go forward. So thank you. Thank you all of the, to all. And then look forward to a great day tomorrow. Bye bye.